If you're looking for extraordinary fall inspiration, I've got you covered. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off with a gorgeous fall floral swag, and it has sunflowers, y'all. We're going to take two of these Dollar Tree Christmas trees. I have a bunch of sunflowers here. Some of these picks. Some flowers. Just little clippings from what I had last year. Some more little random pieces. Some thrifted pieces. And then these also came from the thrift store. You can get as many picks and pieces as you would like from Dollar Tree, of course, that will be very similar. I'm gonna take the two trees out of the box. We don't need the bottoms and legs. I'm gonna overlap them so that their stems kind of go into one another. You'll start by pulling the tree apart, apparently. <laughs> by pulling the branches out and upward because we're gonna be laying it down so it'll be flat then. I wanna get two little spots available for me to put my zip ties on so that it will hold these tree trunks, if you will, together. So I'm going to just hold it tightly in one hand and go ahead and put this around one end. So this will be close to the end of one of them. And you want to cinch that all the way down and then go to the other side of your little branches and wrap that around. I don't think I'm doing a very good job explaining it, but you can see what I'm doing here. Then you're just going to clip off the extra because we don't need that part. Now you can really do the part where you fluff everything out and move it around. So putting these two trees together, we're going to have a 24 inch swag, which is perfect. And I'm just going to pull the little branches to the side. And like you saw just a minute ago, sometimes they'll come off, but that's not a big deal. These are not really going to be something that's going to make this beautiful. This is something that's going to help us attach all of our florals down to the base. So this is just really our bottom. You won't see much of this whenever we're done. Continue to fluff out from side to side so that you have it flat on the bottom and pull each one of those apart. Sometimes they're kind of stacked together, just like those two. So just be sure you pull them apart because that's going to help you whenever you put your florals down. You'll have more little picks to, or little uh, tie areas to hold your, your products down, in other words. So this is what it's going to look like. It's thicker in the middle and more tapered on the ends. And then I'm just showing you here that we have about 24 inches. Maybe a little more. I'm going to start by just taking one of my wispier pieces and I'm going to put it in the background. On one end, it's going to be overlapping just a little because I don't want the pine to necessarily show through. Pick another piece and put it down here. If you don't have something like this at home already, and maybe you have a thrift store that you don't particularly care for, take an old wreath or an old swag or an old garland that you already have and pull the pieces off. You can certainly reuse things that you've had in the past and repurpose them. I'm calling this a Dollar Tree product because you really can get everything you need from the Dollar Tree. Although some of my products that you see here are actually, you know, thrifted pieces, but you can get them at Dollar Tree. Something very similar. Okay, so you can see here I'm kind of going with the taper and I'm just using the pine in the background to kind of give me my borders and my boundaries for where I am putting my pieces of this I don't know if I want to call this a vine or what this is, this, these green pieces that I'm putting in. But I think the color is much better for fall than the bright green pine, of course. But you know pines are evergreens, right? So they're always going to be green and all year round they're always going to look the same, even in the fall. Yep. Okay, so you can see the shape that I got here. Directly pointing outward on each end and then at an angle crossed over on each end, kind of moving inward a little bit. And now working from the center, I'm just gonna add a piece here. This is gonna be pointing upward and I'm just gonna wrap it. You can see that these little wired pieces really help lock those greenery pieces down. My videos are Mondays and Thursdays at five, y'all. Now I'm gonna start working with my pretty I think these are oak leaves, yeah. I'm gonna start putting these down. Now, I said thrifted because I'm pretty sure this particularly this particular greenery 
was from a thrifted wreath that I have, but it might not be because I had another wreath too that I repurposed that was something that I had had for years. So I'm not exactly sure because these had been pulled apart like this for years. I just used them again and again because I love the coloring in it. All right, so we're gonna use kind of the same pattern that we did when we put the other pieces down and we're just gonna add our, our greenery or our leaves right on top of that. You're layering here, right? And I'm sure to make sure that the tips of the leaves are hanging over the edge of the swag. Now for some of you who are familiar with wreath making and swag making, you probably don't want to see this in normal speed. But it is helpful from the information I've been getting, the feedback. It is helpful for some people to be able to look a little bit longer and be able to see what I'm doing a little bit more thoroughly. So I'm going to do this. Um, in honor of those viewers and subscribers that need a little extra time. So you can see how it's looking so far. They always look terrible before they start looking good. And I would say that this looks pretty rough right now. These have little wired ends and then sometimes you can just kind of thread them through what's underneath if you're going to keep them inside. However, if you're going to be putting these outside, you should probably be adding a little bit of Gorilla Glue to the picks before you put them down or maybe putting a little Gorilla Glue over the areas where you have them pinned. Okay, you see, so this piece just came apart here. I'm just going to glue it back on. No big deal. That was easy enough, wasn't it? I'm going to take my other little pieces here, and this is a different type, but Pretty much the same coloring. I'm going to add that. I love the bright colors in this. And I'm just going to continue to put these around where I see that they need to be put. But everything is kind of facing outward from the center. That's what we want because we're going to do something different in the center. I'm going to put these little berry pods and cut them apart in little pieces, leaving enough stem for me to add glue so that I can place them down in there. I know I'm kind of out of camera angle. Y'all, I gotta tell you, I do get out of out of um, the vision of the camera sometimes. It's because I consider myself an intuitive crafter, meaning when I get in the flow of something, all of the technical stuff just falls away, and I am exactly doing what I feel looks right, and I just kind of go with my gut. So that's kind of why I'm not like perfect with the camera, but you get what I'm what I'm talking about, right? You understand? I know a lot of people say that they craft that way too, so. Moving along, we're gonna start adding those beautiful sunflowers. I'm gonna add one to each end, and then I'll start adding the smaller ones because there were larger and smaller ones on the same pick. If that's not the situation for you and you have all one size, that is not a big deal. It will not matter at all. So now I'm gonna put the sunflower a little bit off from the center and we're beginning to work toward the center. You can see now, and the things in the center are gonna be a little bit taller than what you have on the sides and on the ends. We're building it upward because this swag could actually be used as a centerpiece. Isn't that great? Two and one. Now I'm gonna add in the little orange flowers. I like a variety of textures and sizes. Um, if you saw my last video where I did the really pretty wreath, um, yeah, I just, I just like a variety of textures and things. It's more interesting, I think, to me. And you want a little movement, you know? I think it's pretty. So this is a hot bush. I started off by pushing up after I, you know, they were cut off, pushing the leaves up to the top so they'll be seen. And I'm going to put these in threes on the top in two areas. So there's my first bundle of three. Over here, I'm going to add another bundle of three because I had so much orange and yellow going on there that I wanted to break it up with a little bit of this cream color. And then single here and on the other side. Then I'm going to take three of them together and put them right together in the center, either bottom or top, whichever way. And if you're hanging it, then it's going to be on the side. No big deal. Okay, so when you get to this point, you can go ahead and tuck under any of the greenery that you don't want seen from the pine. Just tuck that under. You can fold it, tuck it. You can add more greenery if you want to do that. So once you do that, you're going to have a little extra space. I just went ahead and used berry picks here. I'm going to take some of this, I believe it's called pitberry, pitberry vine. 
And you can get these in the little rounds at Dollar Tree. Almost every season they have them in different colors. These are gold. I took one strand of it, wound it around the end of a uh, tool, and just cut it in half. And I'm going to pull it out and just glue it down kind of out from where the sunflowers are. You'll see in just a minute. There you go. Just a little extra something. And you can do more of these or you can leave this out if you want to. And this is how it is going to look. Gorgeous. And it would be pretty if you flipped it over and did the other side or if you want to use it for, you know, a swag. If you wanted to put it above your door, you could do it that way. You could use it in many positions and you could put it on your table. It would be very pretty as well. So if you decide that you do want to hang it as a swag, we're going to use a little bit of burlap and I'll show you how to make that tie for the back. Very simple. You're just going to double up one piece, pull the knot down where you want it, and then you have your loop. So this is a hanging loop. Flip it over, and then you can just use the same little branches from that Dollar Tree Christmas tree and just twist it around, poke it down in there, twist it so that it will hang up. It's not heavy at all, so um, no worries about that. Again, use hot glue if you need to. Next is our metal sign. Y'all, we are going to be using all kinds of Dollar Tree stuff in here. Here's ribbon from Dollar Tree. These paints actually did not come from Dollar Tree, but I have a brown and an orange. This is from Dollar Tree, and I just recently found it. And then these window clings right here. These are from last year. I love this one, and it fits perfectly on this frame. Use whichever ones you can find, whichever ones you really like. Hey, go back through your stuff from last year. What did you leave off? What did you not use? Go ahead and use them now. It's still early. I am going to water down these paints because I want them to be more like a stain. So just a drop of paint and a little drop of water. And then I'm going to use my brush to paint. So I'm going to cover the yellow leaf with this brown. And this is mm, maybe fawn brown doesn't really matter. This is a pumpkin orange. I love these little wooden leaves. They're so cute. You can get these at Dollar Tree. Something similar to it. And then I'm going to pat them dry and this is how it looks so you can see through it. I'm going to take this ribbon and do two pieces of 18 inch cuts and then we're going to make a very simple bow. You can see I've got two little ears and I'm going to wrap one around the other and poke it right through that little hole. Pull out the little ears and pull down the tails. And then I'm going to cut them. You can do whatever cut you want here. I just made the front a little shorter than the back just for some dimension. There's one option for you for these. But if you prefer, you could do something like this. And this is the way I like it. I have a thing for bows off to the side. I think if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that this is a pattern for me. But I'm okay with that. That's just my thing. Okay, so I'm just going to glue those wood leaves together and I'm going to put this one down. A little pretty bow right on top. I think they coordinate nicely and they're really nice on this little sign. Now we're going to do a triple frame decor piece also with Dollar Tree things. This set of window clings. Here are my 4x4 little floating frames, whatever you want to call these. This is how you open these up. You're just going to undo the back. The two glasses come apart. You place one back down and then you're going to pull your paper off. Now I don't know why in the world they would do this on glass, but I don't work for Dollar Tree. I can't tell them. This is a piece of double stick tape, I think, but it is very difficult to get off. I didn't want to scratch my glass with any metal, so I grabbed my Goo Gone, sprayed it on there, and then kind of rubbed it in with my finger, and then took a plastic scraper and took off the residue. Now, after you do this, you're going to have to take it and clean it with some soap and water or glass cleaner because this has a oily residue and it can be quite messy. But it will come off. It will uh, take it off of the glass. 
You can also use this on your other projects you need the tags removed from. So you can see on those window cleans they have a background and when you peel them off you'll still see that background which is not going to coordinate with what I have going on. So what you need to do is cut as close as you can on the backing, leave it on your backing, and go all the way around the edges. Don't worry if you can't get it perfect right now. You can always go back over it. Grab some scrap paper that you like. And this is a pack that I got on clearance from Michaels last year. Beautiful pieces. And this is what I do when I am choosing a background or something. I, I just lay it on top of it and see what it looks like. That's all I do, simple. I'm sure you do the same thing, but this is easier than just imagining it and running across the room to look it up and then it's not the right thing. So this is how I do it and I love this piece. Now you can take your pane of glass and cut this 12 by 12 piece of paper into four pieces and use my frame to get a nice perfect edge and we know it's going to fit. So I'm going to take my little wheat paper and sandwich it between my clean glass, both pieces. Be careful because the edges can be sharp on this glass. Y'all be super careful. We're going to take that flipped over frame, lay it right on the inside. You don't need to glue it or anything. It'll stay right in place. Lock it back into place and then we we'll turn it over and decide where to put my little pumpkin cup. I want to use these uh, pop-up stickers. You can get something similar at the Dollar Tree. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I have gotten them there before. These are just some I already had. And then this is going to give us some dimension and shadow. Only press down where you have your stickers so you don't mess up your pretty flat piece. Thank y'all so much. I am so close to my 15,000 subscriber goal that I cannot even stand it. I mean, I can actually taste it so close. I appreciate y'all so much for being here and watching my videos. I've had over 850,000 views, which is amazing, and I'm almost to 15,000 subscribers. So thank you for everything you do. I appreciate you so very much. So same story on this next piece, and I'm going to choose another one. I like this one. I trimmed it all down. I'm going to put some of these pop-up stickers on the back of it. And then, remembering where I put it, I'm just going to press down so I don't dent any of my picture. And here is the second one. Okay. This is the third and final one. I'm going to use this pumpkin. You can mix and match if you wanted to also. You can cut these in half. Mine went flying. So after I found it, I put it in place. And then you can just flip it over and center it as much as you want. Put it where you want in the frame. Maybe you don't want it in the center. Maybe you want it off to the side. That is totally cool. Press it down. And there's the third one. So now we can take our three and decide what we want to do to put them together. So I thought these little wood pieces would be cool. You can put these wood pieces in between to make them look linked. Or you can use beads. You can use certainly the beads that you get from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to start by going by measurements here to find the center of my frames. Because I want to put the little bead down in the center of the two frames that are going to be on the side. Then I'm just going to flood it with a little bit of glue inside of the openings to make sure that it stays down. And then once it's cool, I'm going to start assembling it and putting it together. Now these beads are not going to hold this good and tight, um, but we're going to reinforce it on the back so that they'll stay together. Going to add a little dot of glue, put them together, grab a ruler or a straight edge and put underneath it so that you get these in the right flat position. And we're going to do that for this side. Just add some glue either on the bead or the frame and you're going to pull it down. You don't want to lift anything up at this point because they're going to just come right apart. After they've dried, carefully flip them over. Then you can take a popsicle stick, grab a Sharpie, paint it black, or you can get a, your paint or a furniture, a black furniture marker, any of those things. And then you're going to trim it down into two pieces. 
that you can put across the back. These need to be smaller than the, the uh, bead that you have so that you really don't see them. They kind of disappear. And then do the same thing on the other side. Just okay. like that. So here's the trio that we did. Love it. And there's so many beautiful window clings that you can get at Dollar General and Dollar Tree and even Walmart, I think for 98 cents, that you can make these signs. I believe in you, and I know that you can do these projects. I know it, without a doubt. If you're a thrifter and you don't do the Dollar Tree thing, go and get your florals. Search for them all year. The first project is a tablet box makeover. Beginning of summer, we got some tablets for my kids and I decided the sturdy boxes were gonna work. Here they are. I've got some of those metal signs from Dollar Tree in a three pack, some Elmer's school glue, and then some 12 by 12 crafting paper. Choose whatever print you like. I love these. I'm going to use my little heat gun here to take my stickers off the box and they peel off so nicely. Everything is nice and smooth. This box is actually sturdy enough that I can make two signs out of it, but I'm just going to make one box sign. So you can tape your edges down if you would like, or you can use a little hot glue to glue it together. This is the print that I've chosen, but the one under it's gorgeous as well. All right, so I am going to flip this over on my cutting mat. I'm going to make sure that I have it even underneath. My corners are all even. And then I'm going to use my little crafting knife here and just cut a nice smooth line. And then I have the perfect fit for the top. I'm gonna take this purple glue, no worries. It does turn clear whenever it is dry. This is a really good choice. I like to use this purple glue because you can see exactly where you put it and you'll know if you miss any spots. Plus, you don't get all the bubbles when you use the glue stick. Win-win. Okay, gonna go all the way to the edges as well. And then I'm gonna take that paper, flip it back over there, and just make sure it's lined up and press it down. Here's a tiny bit of space on either side, but I'm not worried about that. It matches with the background of the paper. So you can use a ruler or any type of a tool to press that down and make sure it's nice and smooth. You can paint or decorate the edges of your box if you want to. You could use ribbon to trim it out, whatever you like. I'm gonna leave mine plain. And then here are some beautiful deco art paints. They are all metallic. There's a espresso, a rose gold. There is a gold, beautiful, glorious gold. And then the worn penny, which is my very favorite. I'm gonna take Mod Podge and a little sponge brush and just put some Mod Podge on here first. This is going to make our paint stick better. And this is just something I like to do when I'm painting on metal sometimes. You can skip it if you don't have any, or you can use school glue if you'd like. Be sure that it is dry. I'm just gonna dry mine in a hurry here. And then when it's dry, you can take another sponge brush and just start dabbing on, or just kind of uh, pouncing up and down with your sponge brush, and just go all over up and down until you get the coverage that you like. I'm not looking for a solid, opaque finish. I like to be able to see a little bit of that galvanized metal underneath. Simple, simple. If you don't have these words, you could also use your Cricut to make some words, or you know, you could, if you can freehand it, you could do that too. Drying that paint, and once it's dry, we're gonna use some of these little, um, these little sticky tabs, and I'm gonna cut them in half. And then that way they will fit on the back and give us a little dimension for our project. So you're gonna pull the paper off of each side. This exact brand, I'm not sure where it came from because it was thrifted, but you can get something similar to this at Dollar Tree and they'll work just fine. I use those too. So when you cut those down like that, you can put it on the thicker, longer pieces, just like you see me doing here. And then you can turn it over and lay it on your project. You can, again, eyeball this if you want to, or you can use a ruler and kind of go 
at each end and from side to side to make sure that it is straight if you would like. Then you can gently, gently press it down. And then I'm just taking a ruler to press it down evenly because the, um, it won't bend any of the metal. And I think that looks really nice. You could use white or navy blue, something that really stands out if you want, because this just doesn't stand out a whole lot, but I like it. I'm going to use this wall, this uh, walnut furniture repair marker, and I'm going to go over the edges of this beautiful metal word. This is just so that I can see it a little bit better and it stands out a little bit better. And I'm just kind of going on, almost like when you are doing your own hand lettering and you kind of on the downward stroke you may get a little bit thicker or darker that's kind of what I was going for here hand lettering is not something that I do so probably not doing this correctly but um, it's gonna give me the desired look I think it's enough for me to to know and hey, we, you know, we got to try new things. And we don't always do everything right either. I mean, you know, it's okay. It is okay. We love ourselves. We get creative. We embrace that part of us. And we're not perfect, so it's okay. It's just crafting, right? And there is no wrong in crafting. So just cover this as much as you would like. You could also use black around the edges if you wanted to, like a black Sharpie, and that would really make it pop. So now I like that much better. Who would have thought an iPod box? So if you want to do a little something extra, you can take any type of a wooden embellishment or a sticker and add to the bottoms, or you could add it to the top. You could add one, you could layer them on. Those are wooden stickers that you see on the bottom. And then that one actually, I pulled off of something from a fall piece from Dollar Tree years ago and I just hung on to it. You could do them right next to it if you wanted to also, but I like it just like this and you see it stands quite nicely on its own. Doesn't need a stand or anything. The next one is a scrap lumber makeover. This piece of wood was destined for the garbage pile. It was actually next to the burn pile and I pulled it away from the tree so I could bring it in and use it and apparently not my table over in the process. So this is what it looks like. It's kind of dirty, scuffed up. I went ahead and wrote down 57 inches so you'll know how long this is. I didn't trim it down. It's exactly as it is when I pulled it. I'm gonna use some walnut wood tint. This does not have any smell at all. It doesn't stink, it doesn't stain, it's great. Well, it stains your wood projects, but you know. So I took it outside and used my sander on it, my electric sander, and then brought it back in, wiped it off, get all the little dust off, and then now I'm just taking an old terry cloth rag here. You know, you can keep your old towels and just tear them into shreds, and they're really good for staining and cleaning your craft projects. You save a little money that way. So you can just go ahead and put as much as you need, as much as you like for whatever coverage that you desire. You might could use antiquing wax, but I'm not entirely sure because things don't like to stick to it very well. So I've gone over to my Cricut and I'm cutting out the letters for the word harvest. I've already measured everything. This is not like a Cricut tutorial video, just letting you know. I'm not a pro, so I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step on a Cricut, but there are plenty of crafters who know exactly what they're doing. You probably wanna go to them for those tutorials. Moving along, I am going to remove or weed all of the extras off. And you see the little pick in my hand that actually comes from Dollar Tree, and I really like it. So, I am going to, now that it's all weeded, I'm going to take a piece of contact paper that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to lay this on top, and I am going to use this to lift my letter off without tearing my letters. So I am transferring it. This is like a transfer tape, if you will. I'm gonna place it down here on the wood and I'm not gonna press it all the way down yet. I'm gonna measure and see how far down it is. If it's where I like it. And that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm gonna move it down just a little cause I need a little space on the top for extra embellishing. And I'm just measuring here on the sides as well so that it is centered. 
And once it is, I can press it down with my hands and then get some type of a tool and or squeegee and then go ahead and press this down into place. This vinyl that I'm using, I thrifted it. It is awful. It is awful for vinyl projects, but it is great for stenciling because it peels up very easily. Ta-da! My first one. Okay, so now here it is. With all of the letters in place, I've used about, there's like an inch of space in between each letter there. So I have a nice gap. Then I'm gonna take some of my plaster chalk paint and go over the top. I'm lightly going over the letters so that I don't go under because I didn't seal. And then I'm gonna go heavier over after that. Then you can just peel off. You can see how that was tearing. And then this is what it looks like and I love it. Love it, love that dark wood showing underneath. Okay, so you can get these packs of little wooden cutouts from Dollar Tree, um, Harvest DIY Words. Very good value because there's six in there. And you can use these to embellish your projects. I'm gonna use this on the top of my sign. And I'm just going to stain it with the same stain. Like the, oh, look what I did. Oh, it's so frustrating. They are so fragile, y'all. But look, I'm just going to keep going. I'm rolling with it. Just keep on going because we can fix it. We can fix it. Oh! Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of my wood glue here. And I'm going to be gluing this down. I've already glued down the two Fs. And I'm going to glue down the rest of the word right next to it so that it is exactly where I want it to be, wiping off my extra wood glue. I'm just gonna stick it back together. See, no need to throw it away. We can still fix it. The next project is a sauce jar makeover. So simple. A lot of steps, but easy. So this is a spaghetti sauce jar. It has been put through the dishwasher and all the sticky has come off. And I have some candle tops. I have some berry garland. I also have some moss, some foam, etc., etc. I'm going to start by trimming off a little bit of foam to fit in the lid. Be sure that you put it right in the center so that you do not, it doesn't get in the way when you put the jar back down because we will be putting the jar back down. You're going to glue some moss on here. You can use reindeer moss if that's something that you prefer. And we're going to take that berry garland and turn it into a little tree. Yeah, a little fall tree. So to, mo to make that stem a little bit sturdier we're going to fold it up on itself twist it and then just kind of pinch it together so it's skinny then you're going to cut off different lengths of that same berry vine and then start twisting them together at different heights on that what we're going to call our trunk the longest branch we're going to call that our trunk you're going to start adding on in the shape of a tree this is going to kind of symbolize a fall tree. So if you didn't look at those as berries, you could imagine that those might be fall leaves, right? Because they're a dark red and an orange. So you can cut them at different places. I like to cut right above where the little berries come out because then you don't have a stick poking out on the top. What is actually the tip of it will be where the leaves would be if those berries were leaves. So I'm going to wrap around here and just pinch it together with the little pliers whenever I need to to keep it in place. Our tree will not be flat. It's gonna kinda look that way for a minute, but then once we get it all um, as thick as we want it, as many branches as we want it, we will pull it out a little bit and twist the little branches in the ways that we like them, and then it will be ready to go into our jar. So now I can take that sturdy branch that we made and press it down into that foam underneath. And this is our little tree. It is not too wide and it will easily fit up into our jar because we checked it, we know it's the right height. So I'm gonna press down, tighten it up, and just trim off the little pieces that are on the outside. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. And now we're going to embellish the bottom so that it doesn't look like a jar sitting on a piece of wood. So we're gonna take some jute we're gonna tie it, or you can start it off by just gluing it down, but I just tied it this time for whatever reason. And then you can just start twisting and gluing because there is a Prego label, 
Prego, Prego, whatever you want to call it, spaghetti sauce label, cut into the glass or raised up off the glass, and we want to cover that up. So you can twist going upward and just add dots of glue where you need it. And this is going to cover up that piece. If you're here from any of the other crafters channels and you are new to my channel, welcome here. I am so happy that you came by. I hope that you check out the playlist below to see everybody else's projects. I would love it if you would subscribe and become part of the family here. We have a good time. We're very social in the comments and very supportive. All right, so you see how it looks. I've shown you here how it looks when you go all the way down to the jar. Now to put the top and bottom on the jar, we're gonna use some whatever type of glue you like. I've got some um, super glue gel stuff that comes from Dollar Tree. Fix All, I think is what it's called. And then some hot glue, and we're gonna center it over that lid on the bottom. So that's gonna be our base. And then the smaller lid, we're gonna use the same glue process as before. And we're gonna put it on the raised areas now because the bottom, some of them have like a, a little indention. You're gonna put the top on and then you can use like a bead or a knob or a little pine cone or some type of embellishment on the top I just have a piece of a chest set that I got from the thrift store just use some hot glue and put that one down we're not gonna be lifting it by that little piece so no worries about that I'm gonna wrap a little bit around this lip just because I think it looks better uh, you know with the bottom it looks more finished I think I'm gonna trim that off then I've got some bows that were destined for the garbage can that came off of other projects. Saved them, and I'm gonna recycle them and reuse them on the base of this cute little piece. Isn't that sweet? That's cute, y'all. And now you can just dovetail your ends or cut them at a slant or whatever you wanna do there. You could also just make a jute bow, or you can make a bigger bow to go on there, or you could put your bow on the top. But here's our little tree in a jar. Isn't it cute? Almost here's like a little harvest sign tree. that we made from the box. Would have been recycled. Very simple. Free. Cost me nothing. Cost me nothing to make this as well. All of these things I already had at home. I love this. You could also put some lights in there if you wanted to. That would be cute, little twinkle lights, little fairy lights. I like the way this looks. Very rustic. And here is our leaner that we sold for $20. Okay, so it says harvest, very simple. The bottom is open and that is intentional because I want to have that down there where it will still be seen. You can see the word above the pumpkins that I will be stacking Hobby around Robbie it. Cotton and burlap dupe. So on a recent vlog that I did or a recent video, I went to Hobby Lobby and saw a cotton and burlap little arrangement that they made, but it was like $16.99. You'll have to go back if you want to see it and watch that last video that I did. And I said I could dupe that, and so it was requested that I do that. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do, and you can use um, you can use Dollar Tree supplies for this. So it's going to take a styrofoam ball, put it in any jar that you want from Dollar Tree. You won't be able to see it, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I'm going to take some scraps of burlap. I had a little a little um, bundle of it, and I just cut it in two pieces, the same size. I'm going to cut these stems down. And I'm going to cut one about an inch longer than the rest of them. So here's this roll, and this is what I was saying about cutting this into pieces. You see how this burlap fits up to the sides? That's what you want. So choose your jar that is going to fit whatever piece of burlap or fabric that you're going to use to cover your jar. So I'm just doing that here. I'm going to lay this one on top and use the underside, the one on the bottom, as a guide. And just cut that one the same length. Now we're going to take these pieces and turn it so that it makes like a T or a plus sign, just like this, you can see. And then the little jar will go right in the middle. You're going to use some burlap string, or some jute, rather. And I'm going to cut a couple of pieces 
I'm going to use these to hold this onto the jar so we don't have to glue this, thank goodness, because we would be burning our fingers. So I'm just going to bundle this up around the top, almost like you would gather up a ponytail. So you're just going to gather it up. I'm going to take a piece of that jute and we're going to go around where the lid goes on the jar. But we're not using the lid, but in that section, that's where we're going to put it. That's going to be where we cinch it. You're just going to wrap that jute around there and do it tightly, as tightly as you can. Hold your fingers on that knot, just like I'm holding that here. I'm trying to hold it so it won't slip. Sometimes it's a struggle. Try to keep it tight, and then we're going to make a double knot in it. I left all this in here so you could see that I'm not perfect. We crafters are not perfect, but I got it on there. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of pull it around so that I have it evenly spaced and that the jar is completely covered. And to make sure that none of that fabric is underneath, um, has slipped below where I've tied it. So I'm going to take the other piece, wrap it around, grab that piece of jute, and we're going to do the same process. You're going to go right over where the lip of that jar is, or the top of the jar, whichever way you want to call it, where you screw the lid on. You're going to go down and tie it in a double knot or triple knot, whatever makes you happy. See, I'm keeping my thumb in place. Now, nice and tight. So once I have it good and tight, I'm going to just pull this up because my burlap had slipped beneath it, so I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to just kind of slide it around a little bit so that it, it gives the appearance that I like. Then you got all this stuff on here. You can just pull off your little unraveled pieces or you can leave them on if you like that look. You can trim this down if you like, but I like the idea of having it long because it looks like a bag to me, like a burlap sack. And that's kind of the idea. So for more security, I'm just gonna wrap it around the back since I had this long piece of, of string and I'm just gonna tie it in a double knot. Now everything is nice and secure. I can trim that off. Now we can start putting in the cotton stems. So I'm gonna start off with my tallest stem and it's gonna go kind of in the middle. You can see how that's gonna look. It's gonna be about level with the top of my little pieces of burlap. And then at an angle to the side, I'm going to put the next stem, which is shorter. You can see the angle. And then on the back side, we're kind of making a triangle. We're going to do it this way. Now, obviously, if it's going to be against a wall, you want all your pods to be facing outward. But if it's going to be in the center of something, you can kind of put them at uh, different angles where they're all facing outward. So I've trimmed off a little bit of that string. I'm going to go back and take about two and a half feet in three strips of my jute. I want to have enough that I can wrap around here and make a bow. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go above it now because I want that fabric like on, um, I think it was in the Hobby Lobby video. It's a little bit closer to the pods, I do believe. So all I'm doing is going up above it. This is above where the jar is. I'm going to tie it. I'm not going to tie it too tight. I don't want it to be too thin. And then I'm just going to make a really simple bow here. And fluff out all of my pieces of strings. Just kind of separate them. And fix the tails. And that's how that looks. Now this was easy. I had these pods from last year, so they were only a dollar. The jar was a dollar. I've had it since last year. I already had the burlap and I already had the string. So that is a much better cost effective piece. If you ask me, what do you think? The next one is going to be a dahlia wreath. I forgot to mention that all of these projects are from Dollar Tree. Okay, so somebody donated to me a huge amount of crafting supplies and a lot of it, almost all of it was fall. So that was last year and I am going to be using a lot of those pieces to make a wreath this year. All right, so we have eucalyptus and a variety of leaves and we have our dahlia with the burlap. This is a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. You can get it in several colors, just whatever's available to you. And then we're gonna use some type of ribbon or burlap 
ribbon to go around the wreath. This color doesn't matter so much because we're going to be covering it, um, but you can definitely use, you know, whatever color that you like. You can even use scraps. Thank you so much to those of you who went over and watched my video, the Hobby Lobby video. It is not a very popular video um, for me on this channel, so I know that's not necessarily what my viewers are looking for, and that is totally okay. But if you did come by, I'm going to give you a big shout out for watching that. It means a lot to me when you support anything that I do on this channel. Okay, so we're going to continue to wrap around. This will make it almost completely around. I'm going to use dots of glue here and there. You want to kind of pull these not too tight, but you want to kind of overlap as sparingly as you can. And that is one whole spool of that burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I've got one extra section. If you have another spool of the same thing, you can certainly use that. But if you have a scrap, and we're just going to say that this is a scrap, you can just wrap that around there. As long as the colors are somewhat the same so that they don't scream through once you get your florals and your greenery on, then it'll be totally fine. Can't give up, right? When you've invested this much time, there's no giving up. So we're just going to wrap that little spot and put some hot glue on there. And then we're going to just simply trim it off and we're good to go. We've got our wreath form ready. So I'm going to take these beautiful picks. Don't you love these? These are gorgeous and I love these colors. Just going to cut all these off the branches. We're going to make these more manageable. And because we, I'm going to want a full coverage with these leaves, I need them all taken apart. So we're going to, this is so easy. I know I'm out of camera angle here. I know you can't see up there, but this is going to be so easy. You're going to lay one down, kind of pointing off in one direction. We want all of our leaves to point the same way, right? All going in the same direction. And then you're going to put one kind of off to the right. Going to add it, a little bit of glue there. You don't have to just burn yourself with the glue. You don't have to pour it out. But you know you're going to need a little bit and hold it in place for just a second. We're going to add the next one kind of upward and to the left. Be sure you connect it to the wreath and the other leaf. And then we're going to take the next leaf and point, point it up and to the right. And this is how we're going to do it all the way around this wreath. And you won't be able to see any little holes or cracks. I used four of these picks to do this wreath. And I only had one little spot that needed extra. But I'll show you in a minute how I fixed that. Continuing along here. And you can just trim off the little stems. Um, I could have cut them shorter. So you may want to just cut yours right off at the base of the leaf to save yourself a little bit of time. See, I got all the way around and I just had one little piece that needed covered. So I had another leaf in my pile, in my scrap pile that matches close enough and you won't be able to see it. I'm going to kind of layer it back behind and glue it down. And there is our wreath with the base of leaves. Now I'm going to take those dahlias and push all the greenery up to the head of the flower because we want to use the greenery too. And then I'm going to cut them off as close as I can to the flower. The eucalyptus comes off the pick very easily. It just slides right off each one of them. Okay, so I'm gonna take the, take the leaves off and then pull this part out. You can cut it off, but it really does just pull right out. I found that out later. Pull the little plastic part off the leaves and then it's gonna be, it fits perfectly over there so you get a flatter surface to attach. See the two different sizes? All right, we're going to start gluing these down now. This is going to be in a four. One, two, three, four, north, south, east, and west. I'm going to start off with the largest of the dahlias and then start working um, in four sections. So I did the top, the bottom, and then I will put one large one on each of the sides approximately. I don't get the ruler out to do this kind of stuff because I'm not that picky about having it perfect. Um, but you can do it however you like. And then I'm going to take one of each of the smaller ones, add a little hot glue, and then snug it right up and against the bigger one. I'm going to use the same pattern all the way around. So it's the top two is large and small, the next two large and small, the next one is large and then small. So we're going on a circular pattern. We're following the pattern all the way around like clockwork. Okay, so 
going to put a little glue here and then it's going to be right above that one. So you can see that pattern, right? This is easy. So easy. I'm going to take a piece of this willow, cut it up, and then use little pieces here and there to give us sort of movement in the wreath, to give us a little bit of extra interest. So I'm just going to do the same thing all the way around. So if I do it to one little duo of flowers, I'm going to do it to each set all the way around the wreath. This is very simple. Just take your time. Then I'm going to do the same with the eucalyptus, little hot glue, and I'm going to press it down into the center part going outward of each one of the leaves. I'm going to continue around just like this all the way around. And I think that the variety of textures in the flowers, in the leaves, in the eucalyptus, which is kind of a plastic, and then the little fluffy, seedy looking willow branches, I think it makes a lot of interest and makes this a really pretty wreath. So let's go to these little, whatever these are, and we're going to cut these off. These were just some scraps from last year that I had in another arrangement. And in the center of each of the little bunches of flowers, I'm going to put one of these little pom-poms, or whatever you want to call these little things. I took the greenery off of them, and I'm going to use that too, because that gives it another little bit of interest. It's kind of spiky, so it's a different texture, and it gives it a little more green. I live in the south, and this is still summertime, and we're thinking about early fall, so we definitely still have some greenery um, you know, some green in our environment, most of us in the South. So we're going to continue around. Y'all, if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate it so much if you would share it with your friends or family or on your social media, anybody who you think would enjoy this video. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps my channel to grow. It lets me know that my hard work is paying off and that people are seeing my, my work and that they're enjoying it. And when my channel grows I can share back with you by buying more supplies and you know making more trips to the thrift store and really putting out the best material I can for you so it's very much appreciated so we're just going to continue along and I have more eucalyptus left so I'm just going to go back in and add it wherever I think I need it and I really like the way that the green and that little touch of orange on the tips it breaks up the orange that is in the kind of the peachy orange tan color in the flowers and then the base of the leaves on here. You can certainly use any leaves that you like but if you like this almost monochrome look then those leaves are perfect with these flowers and this other greenery. Be sure that you have some pieces that are on the inside of your wreath as well not just on the outside and you don't want to glue anything completely flat down. You want it to have some movement because you want it to appear as though it's real. So this is how it looks. Do you like this? Give me a thumbs up if you like this wreath. Okay, now a little tip. You can grab your little heat gun and go over all of those little strings of glue and it'll melt them straight away and you won't see any of that in your final project. Y'all, my videos come out on Mondays and Thursdays at 5. Now is our gather box sign. So we've all seen these at Dollar Tree, right? Well, what if you can't find one that is specifically fall, but you want to have one for your home in fall? Grab some scrapbook paper that you really love. And I have some options here. And then we're going to take it apart. It was already loose on one end, and I was scared I was going to break it. It's so delicate looking, isn't it? So I'm going to take my metal ruler. I'm going to gently kind of slide and lift and go back and forth on here until I break the glue seal. It's only glue. It's not nailed or stapled. And watch, it's going to come off perfectly. Yes. Yes, I love it when that happens. Don't you love that? Love it. All right, so the paper won't peel off. I'm just going to add in some chalk paint and put under here because I don't want this print to show underneath. Y'all, thank you so much for the super chats, the thanks, the coffees, the, for the ones of you who have purchased my t-shirts and my merch store. It is so much appreciated. I don't know if I say it enough, but I try to. I really do appreciate y'all. I, I have the nicest subscribers, and it just makes all the hard work worthwhile. So you're going to let that dry. I've popped my two sides off to make this easier. 
I'm going to place that scrapbook paper in all the way to the edge. I'm going to mark the side, spin it around, and then with my fingernails and fingertips, just press down into that edge. That's going to give me a guide for where I need to cut. Look at that. Isn't that great? So you're just going to take your scissors and cut it off, or if you have a mat and a rotary cutter, you can certainly use that too, or one of those big paper slicers. Those are pretty cool too. Mine's small and it won't fit a big piece of paper. Okay, look, perfect. I love it. All right, now you can use Mod Podge, you can use glue, you can use spray adhesive. I'm gonna use some double stick tape. Mine came from Dollar Tree, so you can find it there. I believe I found this over where the envelopes and the packing materials are. By the way, that paper that is on my desk is actually um, shipping paper or craft paper. So there you go. I'm going to lay this down, try to get it kind of centered, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to put the edges back on. I'm going to press it down to make sure that everything stays in place. And I've had a lot of success with this tape, so no worries about it coming loose. Now I'm going to put my edges back on, press them down to make sure they're square before they dry. Then if you just want to use the same top, this is what it will look like. But I'm going to add a little bit of weathering to mine, so I'm going to grab my good old white chalk paint, I'm going to tap most of it off, and just brush it across the gather. And it's going to give it just kind of a whitewash look, it's going to give it kind of an aged look, and I really just like the way it looks. Of course, if you would like to paint yours, you can paint it any color you like, maybe even navy blue if you have like uh, my greenery or my background there has some blue in it. That would be really pretty as well. Just do you, that's the important thing. Do what makes you happy because there's no wrong in crafting. Whatever brings you joy is exactly the perfect piece for you. All right, now I'm gonna quickly, quickly go around here with my hot glue. I'm going really fast, and I'm going to put the top back down. Use any type of adhesive that you like, but, you know, for video recording purposes, I like to use hot glue because it makes it quicker so I can get the videos out to y'all. Nobody wants to be without inspiration, right? If you want to leave it this way, you could, but I thought, you know what, what about, what about trimming it out with some ribbon? So I have some of this little wired, it's kind of a trim that comes from Dollar Tree. And it is the perfect width to go around the edge of this frame. And I think it really does give it a little something extra. And it makes it look more high end. And that's really what we want, right? Just because we get our things from Dollar Tree doesn't, we want, doesn't mean we necessarily want everybody to go, Oh, I see you got that from Dollar Tree. No. We want them to say, That is so pretty. Where did you get that? That's all you got to do. I do the zigzag method with the glue here because it helps catch on to all of the spaces on that piece of trim or ribbon because there's holes in the middle. So I don't want glue gushing out the middle. So I don't want to make a straight line. Does that make sense? So the little zigzaggy works good for this. I'm going to go all the way around and I'm just using my protected finger just to kind of rub it down and push it into place. While the glue's still hot, you can lift it up to get out of line. I want to know what colors you're going to be doing for fall. I know it's early, but it is time to start buying your supplies if you are going to be crafting for fall. So what colors are interesting to you this year? What do you think? Are we doing neutrals, buffalo check? Um, what about the trend with the blue? Do y'all like that? I would really love to know because that helps me get ideas of what I can make that you would like to see. Now once we get back around to the edge, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it off and press it down into the glue. And that's the bottom because we worked on the bottom so nobody would see the trim. See there, that makes a nice clean finish. Isn't that cute? You could put a bow on the side if you want to. You could fix this however you want. You could make it a hanging sign, but if you want it to be a standing sign, all you have to do is take some of those little stacking blocks that come from Dollar Tree. Feel free to paint them if you would like, whatever you want to do, and then just Put it on the back in a couple of little places. While the glue is still wet, if you'll stand that up, if you're not sure about placement, you can tell how you need to, where you need to position them. So these come off the pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I've got like six of them from a couple years ago until now. You can paint them if you want or spray paint them or leave them silver. But I have these pieces that came from something I got out of Goodwill, probably another pumpkin. 
and I love the colors and the just the you know the finish of it they're really pretty and I like that they're oak leaves so I'm just gonna overlap two in the top for a little something and they do match the leaves that are in the background here of my little box sign so I love that and then we're gonna add one here on the bottom making sure that it doesn't overlap where I can't stand it up straight it needs to be out of the way so it has a flat bottom if you get what I'm saying and now once the glue is dried these are metal so I'm just giving them a minute this is how it'll look again if you want to make it a hanging sign you could do that with some beads something like that would be really cute too but I like the idea of having this that I can sit up anywhere I like what do you think about this one so for our early projects we have this gorgeous little Dollar Tree sign that we flipped and made it look even better. Over here we have our beautiful wreath. This is our dahlia wreath. And all of our supplies came from Dollar Tree for this as well. I love this. Do you like this wreath? I love the colors. I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. I'm trying to focus a little bit more on the ones individually so that you can get a better look because it was requested so I definitely want to do what you need me to do so that you can duplicate or get inspiration. Here is our cotton pod burlap arrangement. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. It means so much to me to have you here. I always have a lot of fun and we do giveaways. Be sure that you share this video. It helps me grow and it helps get my materials out to people who maybe don't know me yet. And I would love to have your friends as my friends. Thank you so very much for stopping by and just being you. I hope that you have a beautiful and joyous is a day. corn husk wreath. All right, so we're gonna start with these corn husks and I got these in the, what they call the ethnic food section of Walmart. 70 to 80 leaves in a bag is going to get you a lot of projects done. This is a thrifted wreath that I have. I did see some at Dollar Tree, but I think they're the $3 um, wreaths. You could also use probably a, you know, foam if you wanted to here. But you got to be careful. Stuff likes to melt, and this hay that's in here will give you a nice firm base. All right, so we're going to look at the corn husk. They're in a variety of colors. I don't want to bleach mine because I like, again, the rustic look, and I love the variation of color. So now I'm just going to tear them down to the right size. This particular brand I was very, very happy with because I thought they would be more fragile, but they are actually quite flexible. And you'll see that in this project. So I can't guarantee what the fresh ones would be, like if you took them out of a, a field or somebody's garden because they might would be more brittle and dried out. And I know that there are um, wreaths that you can make by soaking these first. But you know how I like to do. I want to make this something that most people can do with as little difficulty as possible. So I'm going to show you how to do it without all the bleaching and soaking and stuff. But you do what you like. So I'm going to overlap them on the back. Y'all, 15,000, we made the goal. Thank you so, so much. And you can see here how that will look. We're just going to continue around like this, overlapping about halfway. And I kind of got, I'm kind of giving it like a, an eyeball from the corner. I don't want, or the side, you know, that where the curve ends as you're going over the side of the wreath. So pretty much I'm gluing it down toward the center here, if you're looking at this flat like a circle. You know, in my head that made a lot more sense than when it came out of my mouth. But do you see what I'm saying here? Do you see the space that is left after I glue it down between my fingers and the edge of the wreath? That's kind of what you want if you're using this type of wreath because you want to be sure that you have enough of this husk to go all the way around the front of your wreath and to overhang it, right? Because we want this to be sort of like a little starburst pattern. So continuing around, I'm gluing them down. They're just overlapping in the middle. Instead of doing these one at a time, I'm going to do the entire back first. And you can do this too. I thought this was probably the easiest way to do it. By the way, you're going to want to put that glue gun temperature on low because you're going to be touching this a lot. 
get your finger protectors, whichever way you want to do this, just be safe. I don't want any of my crafty friends having any injuries when watching my videos and trying to recreate anything. Especially if you have neuropathy, you don't have good feeling in your hands, be really careful. Okay, so this is how to look in the back, and then when you flip it over, you can see which one needs to come down first. And we're going to follow that circle all the way around. A little bit of glue right on the top. I don't want to glue this down on the tip because it will curl completely under and I want that part to be free. So we fold it and glue it like toward the center where my finger is. And we let the rest of the little tip there just overhang. Just like this. Now I'm going to continue to do this. I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, I had requests that people like to see it a little bit slower so they get a better idea of what I'm doing. So this is why I'm doing this here. Um, if y'all make these projects, which I really hope you do, I want you to hang on to the wreath. Now I'm going to show you how to make two. So if you make your two wreaths, I want you to hang on to them because later in another video, we're going to decorate them. Yep, what I'm going to show you today is going to be the simple little rustic farmhouse, whatever you want to call it, technique for these wreaths. And then later, we're going to embellish them. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But I want to give you some time to get your materials together and to make your wreath bases. And then maybe next week, we'll work on these together and make them really special. So continue around just like this. They're going to overlap a little. And you see, if you had a, a set of these corn husks that were rough and really dry, you wouldn't be able to fold them and bend them like that. They wouldn't be as pliable and they would be cracking. So just be cautious of that and just try to, you know, watch out for that sort of thing. Now you can see where I have glued down this first layer all the way around that you can still see the wreath underneath. See how it looks on the back? And this is how it's going to look on the front to begin with. We're going to go down about an inch and then begin to overlap and make another row here. This is going to be where we're going to curve over and fill in our little blank spaces. So you can continue around just like this. You can go side to side. You can overlap just a little bit. You can make this wreath as thick and fluffy as you would like. Continue around. You can see how they overlap on the bottom, how they kind of just lay on top, one on top of the other. And you want to keep going in a circular pattern all the way around. So if you don't have this type of a wreath form, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you on the next wreath what you can do to make yourself a, a sufficient wreath base. Let's put it that way. And you can get the supplies from Dollar Tree, so that'll be good too. So just keep watching this so you get an idea of the pattern. I want you to know what is going on here. Again, we're not going all the way to the top. Now by doing this, by stepping down just a little bit and making these glue down further, when you fold them over on the front, you will have more uh, length so that they will be a little bit longer. You see this? So I don't know exactly what the pattern is for this, but I like to call this like a starburst because it looks sort of like the sun. So that's just what I'm going to call this wreath. This is going to be our starburst. How about that? This is our first one. Continue around. You want to fill in all of your holes, all of your little spots. You, like I said, make it as thick or thin as you want. And just press it down and protect your fingers. You can see how there are different levels there. And the benefit of having this type of a wreath is that if it's under there and you can see it, not a big deal, right? Because you usually have corn and hay bales and all that at a farm, right? So that would be perfectly fine. But if you want to cover it up, I'm showing you how you can do that too. So now you're going to get your wreath. You're going to look at it and say, where do I need extras? And I can clearly see where I need to add in a little bit more. I love how it, the, the edges just naturally kind of curl down, you know? Now it's going to depend too on which way you put these husks on here. They will curl outward too if you want to turn it the other way. You know when it grows up around 
it's like the leaves that grow up around the corn, the ear of corn, and they curve inward to wrap around it, right? So those, what you're seeing is me putting the curved side downward. But you could do them upward if you wanted to, and it'd be a little more fluffy, a little more floral-like maybe. So now this is much better, right? And look at the variation in the color there. I love that, that grayish green is so pretty. So now as you add on your layers, getting closer and closer to the last row that you wanna put on here, I've only got like three rows, you're gonna use a thinner piece. So tear it smaller than the other pieces. Start with the widest, then the next one, and then the smallest toward the top. It layers nicely this way. Um, and I really like the look of it. Now I'm going back up to the top row. This is not difficult. You don't have to do it this way. You can go back down, but this is just gonna give it the length of each little husk that sticks out. You can see here, some will be shorter and some will be longer. And I like that. And you can do it like this. This is what I did to make sure that that would fit right in the spot where I wanted it. I just kind of laid it out there, looked at it, flipped it over, and then glued it down. So please do not be intimidated by this. This is not hard. Maybe this is something that you could do while you're sitting and watching a good movie. You know, um, what about the Downton Abbey new movie? I have not seen that yet. If y'all have seen it, I would love to know what you think because I'm saving it for a rainy day so I can watch it because I loved watching the series. See here how they curve and how you can still see the wreath form underneath it? I really like that. Now we need something to hang it, so I'm going to give you this option to hang it because I'm going to show you a different one on the other wreath. But I'm just going to tie a really simple knot and a piece of leftover burlap that I had. Not burlap, jute. I do that all the time. And then I'm going to find a spot on the back where I want it to be my top. I'm going to add some hot glue and just take another piece of that corn husk, tear it, and use that as a little, little backing there to cover that up. And then all you have to do is just trim down that jute so it doesn't show on the other side. Let it dry for a minute. And then once you flip it over, this is how it the will The next look. project is gonna be our wreath number two. Okay, so this is where we're gonna make our own base. You're gonna take two bamboo wreaths from Dollar Tree. You can see they're shaped funny. They're not completely round. One is smaller than the other. That is not gonna be a big deal. We're gonna take our tags, of course, off of there and lay them on top of one another. Y'all, this is how I store my jute. Isn't that cute? I did a video on this uh, probably two years ago where I made this. I love it. My jute never gets tangled up and it looks nice sitting right there. I don't lose my jute and it doesn't roll off the table. I love it. It's a little thrifted piece that I got. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in four sections here and just tie these two together. Y'all know how to tie a knot. That's all I'm doing. I'm just tying a double knot. I'm just kind of pushing that wreath around where I want it, get it real nice and tight so that it won't slip on us when we start wrapping it because we will be wrapping this up. So we're gonna do top and bottom, or north and south, and then east and west, or west and east, or side to side, whichever way you wanna call it. And then it will be in one piece. I'm gonna call this one wreath at this point. And you can use wire if you would rather use like some floral wire or something like that. But it doesn't take a lot to get these to stay together and they don't weigh very much. So I'm gonna take some of this cheapy decorative mesh from Dollar Tree and I am going to wrap it around. And I chose this color because I had it in my stash already and because it looks very close to, you know, like a cream color. And it's gonna look nice behind my, my pieces of corn husk, right? It's gonna kind of blend in. And I like to get it all wrapped up I didn't want to use the bear. You could though, you could actually use the bear, but I wanted a little more surface area to put the glue on to put my pieces down. So I'm gonna use this entire roll and go all the way around here. And I believe I got around it twice. So then when I get back to the end, I'm just gonna gather it up, flip it over, tuck it into that last section that I rolled up. Easy enough. And then I'm just gonna grab my glue gun and I'm just gonna poke it down in there 
and put a lots of little dots of glue in there to hold it in. Once it's dry, this is how it's going to look. And you can use either side of it. You can turn it whichever direction you like. Now I'm going to start with these. These are about one to one and a half inches wide. Um, where the ends of it, where we're gluing it down. So they're going to be a lot smaller on this one, okay? You can easily tear them into pieces. And then you're going to start stacking them. Now we're going to be going, you can either go in clockwise or counterclockwise position, whichever you would like to do. And we're going to start stacking and overlapping, going around this wreath, all in one direction, all the tips one way, all the glue one way. I want part of this to be overhanging the outside, and then we're going to have some that go slightly toward the inner circle of this wreath. You can see what I'm doing, and you can see that there's definitely a curve when I put the glue on there. So that's, I'm putting the, uh, the curve downward. But you could flick yours out if you would like, and they would just stand out from the wreath a little bit more. So it depends on the look, really, that you're going for. Pressing down to make sure that it goes through and hangs on to the surface really nicely. It doesn't take a ton of glue, like you don't have to like glue the whole thing down. I want to have a little bit of movement in the pieces of corn husk on the top. Like, you know, when the wind blows or the breeze or whatever, I want to see that. So I don't want to like glue the entire length down, just the bottom. And we're going to continue along like that, overlapping a little toward the inside, a little in the center, and then a little toward the outside. You can see what we're doing here. So for all of the, those of you who participated in the giveaway from our video last week, your names will be put in a hat, and I should have that information to you sometime today. If you don't see it already, then sometime this afternoon, I will have the winner announced in underneath the comment that you make and also in my community tab. So be sure that you have hit the, um, the bell to get all notifications. All right, when you come back around to the beginning, I want to slow it down so you can see what we're doing here. I'm just going to lift up a little bit and continue around. I'm not going to glue the tips where I'd already gone down. I'm not going to glue those down. I'm just going to kind of move them out of the way. And again, they're kind of pliable, so they'll move a little bit, you know. You can get a little lift out of them. I'm just looking to see what looks good. Kind of lay it down. And again, you know, try to look at your, when you're tearing those and you're pulling those apart and getting your stack ready to put them down, choose some ones with some variation in color. They look really pretty and so natural and earthy to me. I just love it. You know me and my rustic stuff. You know how I do. All right, so we are back around and almost done filling in our last little swing of it here. You keep going because you don't, you don't want any gaps or holes. You want this to look like one continuous swoop all the way around. And don't worry if it starts looking kind of weird. It's not a problem. Just keep going. Just push through and keep looking at it. Look at it from all angles, all sides. See where you might want more. You can see here I'm kind of looking and pointing to areas where I want to add a little more. Just add a little hot glue and go ahead and add those in. I'm going to look here and I know that this piece needs some. So I'm going to add it right here toward my outside just to fill out that just a little bit more. This is easy to do. Again, these corn husk projects, they're not hard to do. Don't be confused with the length of time it takes to do it because it'll be very rewarding. I am so surprised. This is the first time I've ever worked with corn husk and I am absolutely in love with the way these projects turned out. And we're not done. We have something else after this one, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm just now going back in and filling in the little gaps that we had here. And when I'm happy with it, we'll go ahead and make a hanger. I'm gonna use this ribbon from Dollar Tree. This is a beautiful, it almost looks like a linen, and um, it's got a gold trim. Thought it was really pretty for this project. I'm gonna take about 18 inches of this. I'm gonna go under my wreath and up through some of the corn husk so it almost disappears in there. Just 
got to be careful. I don't want to break anything. don't want to tear up any of those beautiful pieces that we worked so hard to lay down. I'm going to pull my ends together and then double it over and make one little knot. You can leave the knot on the top if you'd like. If not, thread it through so that the knot is underneath and then you can trim it off if there's any that is underneath that you need to remove. And this is how it is going to look. Beautiful, beautiful. The last project is our corn husk pumpkin. This little thing is so cute. Dollar Tree pumpkin. You're going to take some spray paint similar to the color of your corn husk, or you can use chalk paint, whichever one. Throw that daggum top away. That's so, uh, that's very low end. Let's throw those away, right? All right, so you're going to get your bucket of rocks and your pole. Take this outside and spray paint it while it's dry and work on those corn husk. Now, I just decided to use, these are like an inch and a half. I went ahead and tore these into inch and a half pieces and then I tore some, tore off the little crazy edges so we'd have nice flat pieces to work with and then I tore some off a little smaller and this is where I'm checking to make sure that these are pliable because we're going to be folding these. I don't want anything splitting and messing up. So I decided to take my oatmeal chalk paint and just paint this whole pumpkin with it because the spray paint didn't have the coverage I wanted and I was afraid I would melt that foam on that pumpkin if I kept putting layers on. So the chalk paint worked in a pinch. But you want to be sure that it's completely dry and do not use your heat gun on it. Okay, so the color's good, right? It's close enough. And here's our pumpkin when it's nice and dry. Now we're going to start covering it. So I'm going to take some of the corn husks that are a little bit bigger and these are going to be the first four that we put down they're going to be a little bit bigger so you're going to put some hot glue on it on the cool temp of course and then on the bottom we're going to make like a block or a square or a rectangle um, with these we're going to make a pattern of four so the same thing as we did before you know you're going to make a square here so you're going to go left and right top and bottom or whatever is going to be your pattern and it's important to know this for me mainly i mean you could just go down here if you wanted to and just put them all over the place willy-nilly however you like but that's not how my brain works and if i'm going to do a project i need to have it in a way that i can explain it to you so i'm hoping that some of you learn like me and that you don't get frustrated by the way i do my tutorials but here we have it so now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the other side. We're mirroring what is going on in the other side, right? It's going to overlap the foam and it's going to stick onto the ones beside it. When you flip it over, this is how it looks. North, south, east, west. We're going to start by folding upward. Now, the bag of leaves that I got work perfectly. I had exactly the length that I needed to go from the bottom square up to the circle because we're, that little hole in the top, is where the stem came from and where I held it to paint it and put the pole in it. This is going to be covered up. You won't even be able to see this. These will overlap onto that hole and you won't see it at all. So I'm adding a little bit of glue and then pushing upward toward that hole to make sure that our leaves stay down. Have you ever tried working with corn husk before? These are really cute. I would love to do like a corn husk doll at some point. So if y'all are interested in that, let me know down in the comments and um, I'll try to do something like that for you. And we'll do it together. Okay, so now we have our first four down. And this is how it looks when you first do it. Got it? So if you've got this, you've got it right. Now we're gonna overlap on the corners of each of those. You see here? And those corn husks near the bottom where you see me pushing outward, they are almost like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, almost like gathered or like puckered or something on the ends. So you can actually carefully lay those down a little bit flatter. You can kind of stretch, stretch them out a little bit. Now, if they were really dry, you couldn't do that. They would definitely split. But these are nice and, and soft, nice and pliable. Okay, so you see the same process as we did before. And we're gonna go right over with those bigger pieces over this section. So with all eight of these on here, this starts our base. That's gonna be the base of it. And you can see how painting it really benefits it. 
I mean, you would maybe could even see, if you left it orange, you could probably see it through these corn husk, and we don't want that, do we? Okay. So now we got our first section done. And if you can do that, then you can do all the rest of it. You're going to grab out your next size. So we're going to go down just a little bit in our size. And then you're going to overlap in all those areas that are left blank. You can work in the same format of four back and forth, back and forth, all the way around until you get the entire thing covered. See, I put that one down, so I put one straight across from it. It helps me keep in my mind what I've done and what I still need to do. Crafting this way helps me also when I have a lot of interruptions, like when my kids are home, because I can tell where I left off. And that's important. That's really important. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna lay that one down. You see that hole is completely covered now. Keep working around your pumpkin here. Keep going around until you get all of the pieces, as many layers as you need to do, till you get the look that you like. And again, if any of y'all are bored, I do apologize, but I'm doing this for my ladies who need a little more time. So it looks good, right? But the fact that it has those little areas in there where they're not laying completely flat, it kind of needs a little something extra. So this is where I've taken the smaller ones, the skinniest ones, and I'm gonna use those to go over all those cracks. Y'all be sure, if you have a product that you wanna send me, if you have a card that you wanna send, if you have anything that you want me to know and you need to send me a letter in the actual mail, my post office box is below. If you wanna send me an email, you can find my email address also. And you can send me an email. All right, once the pumpkin is done, you're gonna take another one of those and you're gonna make your own leaf. You can make a simple leaf like this if you want because I'm thinking, you know, what if you don't have a leaf? You can keep using these, right? This one's a bit too long, so I'm gonna trim it down a little bit more. And you can just use this on the top of your pumpkin if you wanted to. Or you could use one of these beautiful burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. Or you can use a leather leaf from Dollar Tree. I just picked these up, y'all, and I thought, oh, that's gonna look so good on this project. So I'm just gonna take one of the little oak leaves or maple leaf, trim it down, and I know I want it to go right here. I don't want it to lay flat like that, so I'm going to layer it with my little leaf that I just made, just like so, and I like the look of that. Yeah, that's better, right? So I'm gonna add some hot glue here and press it down close to the center. I'm going to leave a little space because I want to put this little branch. It came out of a bag from Dollar Tree. I'm going to glue it down right in the center of my pumpkin. They have thicker ones, bigger ones. You can grab a limb out of the yard. You know, whatever you have that you want to use would be really cute. Whatever you like. And so far, this is how she looks. Let's give it a bottom. This is going to give it a little more security so it will actually stay down because it's really lightweight and I don't want it to flip over. So I'm gonna use this little piece of wood, this little wood slice here. It's got a crack in it, so I can't use it for Christmas ornaments, but I can use it for a base. If I put that split toward the back, you'll never see it. It'll give it a little more weight, and I can sit it down just like that. Now let's make a little, one of those little twisty vines. I'm just using a piece of a floral, floral wire that I pulled a flower off of twist it around my little tool here but you can use pit berry whatever you know you want to use you could use wire jute whatever you like but it was laying there so why not right that plastic gives it kind of a leathery look anyway so I think it looks good with that I'm gonna take a little bit of that glue lay it here beside here so it can dry I love it isn't it cute what a cute little pumpkin nice you can make sets of these you can make them with little pumpkins whatever you want so here are our projects now here is that beautiful pumpkin with the leather leaf and remember you can dye these and you can also color them but we're gonna leave them plain 
I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. Without a doubt, I know that you can do this. Don't underestimate yourself. Take your time, take a deep breath, and just start doing it. You gotta start somewhere, right? And then we have our little pumpkin over there. So the set of these look really great together. And with two wreaths, you got a lot of options here. I wanna say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and to all of my viewers. I appreciate you so much. We have a fall frame wreath. So I've got some rhythm, ribbon here. Some of it is thrifted and some is from Dollar Tree. You know, just whatever pretty fall colors you like. I have a little scrap of foam and some floral wire. I have a, a uh, foliage pick here that it's gonna coordinate with my beautiful dahlia. And this was thrifted. And then I have some of these pretty picks too that were thrifted. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture frame that I thought would be perfect for a fall project. So we are going to use this as our base. So normally a picture frame has these little, some type of uh, hooks or little switches or whatever you want to call them that actually close the backing on and the glass in so that it doesn't come loose. But since we don't have those pieces, we're just going to glue them down and get them out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to decide where I want to put my picks. I think you could use some wheat picks from Dollar Tree and those would be beautiful here. Just anything that you can find, you can use Dollar Tree or thrift it or take something old apart and use it. So I think I want it to go this way, kind of an L shape. I'm gonna trim down that piece of foam just into a smaller section so that it will sit right here on my frame. Now at first I decided to wire this down. So I took my floor wire and I just wrapped it through the openings in the frame and just decided to go around the foam. Problem with this is it doesn't sit flat because the frame has so many little divots and bumps and indentions in it. So I decided to just use my glue gun and just put a little bit of glue here and there. I did not use Gorilla Glue because I want to be sure I can clean this up and take it off to use it again later. But if you want yours to be permanent, you could use Gorilla Glue here or some type of a super glue. Okay, so I have trimmed down my little picks that are going to be our first layer. I'm gonna put the first one right in the top. I want it to be a little bit higher than the frame or level with the frame, whichever way you choose. And then I'm gonna take this one, gonna find the pretty side, and then I'm gonna put it right along the bottom of the frame. And I like how it kind of spills downward. It's really pretty to me. So I wanna use these green leaves from this flower and the head of this pretty flower on this project. I'm just going to pull it apart. Okay, take those little pieces of greenery and just poke those right in the foam. If you don't have any pieces of greenery with your flower, not a problem, just grab some leaves. Whatever leaves you find that you like, just use those there. Then I'm going to cut down my foliage pick and I want to cut these in a varying uh, amount of heights. So some will be short and some will have longer stems. Starting toward the top, I'm going to add one pick right in front of where we put our first picks down. And then I'm going to take another one and go kind of in an angle. So top left and then bottom right. And then I'm going to put a taller one right up top. You'll see just a second what I did here. I'm going to pull it down for you. Right here, you can see it's kind of at an angle, gives a little interest. And then I'm just gonna continue to go around. So now I'm in the other bottom corner. I like these because they have those little, like dried seed pods, look like little seed pods to me. But anything with acorns or berries would be really pretty as well. Use what you have. So continuing along, I'm just gonna add these in where I feel like they look good. I don't wanna lay anything completely flat. You can bend your wire, that's totally fine. And that helps give you a little height so that things aren't just completely flat. Then I'm gonna add some hot glue and press down on the foam. And because this is this foam, uh, it doesn't really stick that well with glue, it tends to melt. So I'm just gonna take some of these pins that I have and I'm just going to kind of press those down into the foam to help secure the glue and the foam together. 
just pressing into the plastic underneath and the base of the flower and that's going to help hold it in kind of at an angle like you would do hairpins my video schedule is mondays and thursdays at 5 p.m central standard time now we're going to work on the bow for this i'm using my bow maker that i made myself i'll link that video for you if you'd like to try to make your own and I'm just gonna take this wired ribbon. That's the important thing here. You want wired ribbon for this kind of a bow. I'm gonna flip it over so that the pretty side is always facing upward. I just kind of fold it in half, put those two wired edges together and slide it down. It seems to work best for me when making my bows. And I'm just gonna make sure that both of these loops in the bow are the same length. I'm going to do this regular speed for you so you see how long it takes me to do it so if you do it and it takes you a while don't worry about it right we're not perfect here and we're not trying to be perfect we're just trying to craft something beautiful right okay so I have one tail down one tail up I'm gonna trim it off then we're gonna to go to the next ribbon I want to sandwich that beautiful Dollar Tree ribbon right in the middle and you can see here, I'm going to check the ribbon out to see if there's a, a better side. And both sides are the same. So I don't have to twist anything here. All I have to do is put those wired edges together, slip it down in there, and then press it down. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold it over, and then press it down. Now, the loops on this bow are going to be about an inch shorter than the loops on the bow underneath it. As we add layers of bow, we're going to get them shorter and shorter. And so here's the last one. I've sped it up because it's the same exact thing as the bottom one. I'm going to flip it over, keep that pretty side up, pinch it together, pull it through, making sure that it's a little bit shorter than the other one. You see the layers there, a little step down. Twist it in the middle, holding it still, and then we're going to do the next loop. You can also buy um, bow maker tools on Amazon and I do believe I have one linked in my Amazon store so if, there, if you're looking for anything that I show here on my videos you're most likely to find them there if not let me know and I'll be glad to help you I'm gonna take a zip tie squish it in underneath the bottom zip it up tight trim it off and then cut my dovetails for some reason today my dovetails were not behaving every time I would make a cut they were rounding off. I don't know what was going on. Same thing happened here. I cut it just a bit too short. But you see how easy it is to fix that? No big deal. So now, my favorite part is fluffing the bow. I'm just going to start pulling the loops apart, pulling the tails apart. I've sped it up a little bit because, you know, y'all probably know how to do this part. But it really makes a difference in the way the bow looks. If you just leave it flat, you're just not going to have the same presentation that you would otherwise all right so now we know that the bow should go here and i'm going to use this little floral pin i'm going to stick it through the back of my ribbon right by that little zip tie and then i'm just going to press that up into the bottom of the foam and you can secure that with a little bit of glue there if you would like so i'm pressing it in and then fixing my bow back up because I squished it. I used the fluffing all during the process of making my bow, all during the process. I just like to do it. I like the way the material feels and I like the way it looks. It's just primping, making it pretty, right? And so at this point, you can go ahead and trim your tails a little shorter if you want. They don't have to be the same length. Go ahead and make some shorter, some longer. It gives extra interest and texture. And that's always a nice thing when you're making projects. It gives something more for your eye to dance around, right? Very easy. Move it around however you like it. This is how it's going to look. Now there's a sawtooth hanger on the back so you can just let it just hang it with that. The next project is a sweater pumpkin floral. I love 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 this one. So I got this at the thrift store about a year ago and I've held on to it. I love that it's old and kind of stained looking. It's very rustic to me. Very rustic cottage. 
So this is my 18 inch ruler and you can see that this is about 17 inches long and about seven inches across, just for reference. Look at these beautiful Dollar Tree sweater pumpkins. Oh my goodness. The orange and cream are the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Really, from Dollar Tree, $1.25, I don't even know how they made it that cheap. I'm gonna take some thrifted picks, but you can get any picks that you like. And these are also thrifted. Got some varying heights and textures, and I like that in my projects and my florals. If you have a regular box or planter, just use the same technique. So I'm gonna put two tall ones in the back and sort of spilling over the side. I'm gonna take two and put them kind of more at an angle, but in the corners in the front so that they kind of spill forward a little bit. Just my preference, but you can do what you like. This gives me an idea of how tall and wide I want it to be. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my next greenery picks and put these in here. What are those little, what is that called? Those little poofy looking, it's like a Chinese lantern? Is that what they're called? I can't remember what they're called, but I love the texture of them in this project. Really nice, I thrifted them, but they had Target tags on them. So maybe they came from Target last year or the year before, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna start adding these in. Now they're on wooden picks. You can cut these wooden picks down with whatever type of tool you have if you would like. And I'm gonna add these in at varying heights. I'm gonna start kind of in the front and then I believe I'm gonna go to the back next. I'm gonna leave these a bit taller. I want the taller to be taller. I want the taller to be taller, uh-huh, than the back. You know what I mean. And then you can trim down the next ones you put in to give it sort of a step down look. And these kind of do allow you to bend them forward or to the side on those wooden picks. Just kind of lift them a little bit and twist them carefully. And um, that way they're not sticking straight up. You know, you can kind of do them to an angle, which again gives a little more interest when you look at it from all the sides. Look how gorgeous these are. Look at the colors together, y'all. That's really, I love this. I mean, I don't know if that's everybody's thing, those colors, but to me, that's just, that screams cottage to me. Beautiful, I love it. Okay, so then I decided I wanted to make it a little bit fuller. I'm gonna take a pick of foliage. Again, whatever you have, whatever you wanna use. I'm kinda going for the colors I already have. And I wanted to add just a little bit of that yellowy color in there too. So I've just cut these off again at varying heights. Some on uh, short stems and some on the longer stems because the ones that are longer will go in the back where the taller pumpkins are and the ones that are shorter will go in the front. And I'm gonna add those in wherever I feel like I need a little more fullness. And I like the way these florals look together. Really pretty. I couldn't find any blue pumpkins, but I'm on the lookout for some blue. Acorn door hanger. This one's easy, pretty easy, a little time consuming. These are Dollar General acorns. Two different colors of brown, golden brown and regular brown. I have some spray paint and some rub on transfers. I love when we can do a project that is fairly easy to do, but really changes the look of something. So we're gonna start off by taking off those little bows that were on there, picking all the glue off. You gotta get all that stuff off. Then they fold up very easily. I don't know if Dollar General has these this year or not, but I hope they do. I hope you can find something like this. And then these are just kind of soft, wiry hangers. I'm gonna take those off too. I'm gonna take my sandpaper because the grateful words on here are raised and I wanna get this off. And I'm going to use the sandpaper to rub it all down and just sand it as closely to a flat surface as I can possibly get it because I don't want anything to interfere with the grip between my little transfer and the base of this acorn. 
So I'm just filling it and wiping it off, getting all the dust off. I'm going to take it outside and give it one coat of paint. And then I have some sealer that I'm going to use on the galvanized part and let it dry. So there's one coat with the spray paint. I'm going to take the lighter color of those brown, it's a golden brown, which actually to me looks like the color of an acorn, of an actual acorn. We have live oaks and a variety of oak trees in our yard. If you've seen some of my videos, you've kind of had a look at what we have going on in our yard and I really like this. You could leave it with one coat and just um, kind of go around your edges to make them look curved and that would be really nice or you can do two coats, whatever you like. Now with that Mod Podge sealer underneath, look how well this brown goes on. And this is gonna be one coat of brown on the tops of the acorns. Once everything is dry, you're gonna choose whichever transfer from Dollar Tree that you like and go ahead and put that on. I'm kind of, I'm not measuring, but I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna use my little tool here. It's to be used on vinyl, but it, use, it can be used on anything really. And I'm going to press this down and make sure that I thoroughly go over all the little areas here before I pull it up because I don't want to tear anything. And these, for me, these are really good transfers. I have not had a problem. I used them last year too, and I have not had a problem with them. Look at the beautiful color. It peeled off so nicely. Oh, I love it. You can seal this if you want to with some Mod Podge. If you plan on putting it outside, you could do that. So let's work on the other one. I'm going to use this home. They're like little wooden stickers. It's something else that I got at Dirt Cheap. And I believe it came from Target Dollar Spot or Bullseye's Playground, whatever you want to call it. Now this is curved, this acorn. So these are not gonna lay completely flat. The M and the pumpkin will lay flat, but the H is only gonna stick on one side. So use a little super glue if you have something like this or make yours fit, you know, whatever you decide you want to put. And then the E will just be pushed down on one side and the other side will not be pushed down. You can use stickers for this if you need to, whatever you choose. You could use another transfer, no problem. So I'm just going to take my sanding block and lightly go over so that you can see some of the galvanized bumps under here so that gives the texture back. And I'm going to add it back on very simply. You just push those little clasps down. And I'm showing you here that I did take my tags off. I didn't mini pearl it this time, y'all. Who knows mini pearl? Raise your hand if you know mini pearl. That's right. I'm going way back. I'm throwing it way back. Shout out to everybody who gave me uh, super thanks. I really appreciate that. I don't always notice it immediately, but when I go back, I find them and I really do appreciate it. Okay, so now we're going to make simple little bows. This a little ribbon came from Dollar Tree, as well as my jute that I'm using here. And I'm just going to make a very simple bow with this. And I'm going to tie it in two knots to make sure that it does not come undone. Cinch it up tightly in the middle so that it will stay in place when we are fluffing it up. I don't want my bow to be flat. I want to give it some dimension, and that's easy enough to do. You just put your fingers in the loops and just pull them out and then glue it right on the top. I think the little bows are cute there. But you can put whatever you like, or you can just leave them off all together, but I could see that little crack where they go together. I wanted to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to make a hanger that will attach both of these together, but allow you to hang it off of a doorknob or a, if you have one of those racks that have the hooks on them, this would be cute there too. I'm gonna put knots on each end of this rope that came from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna press it down and then put a clamp on it because um, I want it to dry for sure. You do wanna use a Gorilla Glue or a permanent glue here so that this doesn't pop off. And then after they are dried, I'll take my clamp off and these are ready to go. The next project is an embroidery harvest wreath or hanger, whatever you want to call it. So I got some of this beautiful red truck and pumpkin harvesty looking fabric from Dollar Tree. I have a little stick from Dollar Tree or a little piece of branch and then I got this thrifted embroidery hoop and I'm going to, this is 10 inches, just so you know for your reference. 
it will most definitely fit a piece of this fabric. In fact, a 12 inch will also um, fit this fabric. So I'm just going to unscrew it a little bit and I'm going to press it down and pull the wrinkles out before I get it completely tight so that it's nice and taut there. And then once it is screwed down tightly, I'm going to take some very sharp scissors. I like to lay mine completely on their side against the frame so I get a nice close cut. And I'm just going to go all the way around and trim that fabric off. Using the corner of the fabric is going to allow us the opportunity to use this fabric for something else. We'll have plenty more left. So once it's done, I'm going to embellish the top and I'm taking some leaves, just showing you that I'm looking to see which ones I like best for color. Then I'm going to trim them off and glue them down on the wooden block part of the top. I'm going to use the same colors on the bottom. Then the next two colors that I add on the left and right will be the same color. This is not important, but if you want to know what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to add the lighter color ones last and at a different position. Okay, so now let's make a ribbon. We're going to use some hula skirt and some ribbons. Use whatever you like. We're going to use seven inches. I'm going to use two strips of seven inch. These are wired rimmed, but it doesn't matter, or wired edge, wired rim. We're not talking about glasses, are we? And then these don't have wire. I'm gonna cut four pieces of those two smaller ones and then I'm gonna cut about seven inches of a handful of this. And then we're gonna start making a little stack bow here. A little stack messy bow. I'm gonna put these bigger ones on the bottom and then start adding this hula skirt. This is a very economical way to get that straw or hay look um, without spending a lot of money buying little packages and it lays nice and straight it's very easy to work with so then I'm going to keep on you don't have to do this in any type of a pattern it can be just willy-nilly grab whatever you want but you know like I've said before it's my brain it's how my brain works so this is what I'm doing but you can do it your way you can choose whatever type of ribbon you want. You can do a different bow if you like, but these messy bows to me are like perfect for harvest and fall because they just look so outdoors and they just remind me of harvest. Okay, now you're gonna take some of that jute. You're gonna pick up that stack from underneath. Just kind of hold on to it, pick up that thick ribbon on the bottom and then tie a couple of knots in the jute. If your ribbon starts to curl up on you, don't worry about it, just fix it. Just go ahead and fix it before you tie the second knot. Sometimes they'll overlap and flip around when you're trying to tie up. That's not a problem, especially with this type of bow. Then you can start fluffing up, pulling around, giving you some dovetails. You can cut them at a slant. You can leave them completely straight. You can cut some of these a little shorter than others, and you can take the opportunity to give it a haircut. Just trim down so everything looks about the same. This is a cute little messy bow, isn't it? I love it. And once I get it the way I like it, I'm going to fluff it a little bit more, and then I can tie it to the top. You can make yours a little bit shorter if you don't want to cover your leaves up so much. So we had seven inch pieces, you could certainly do six or five inches if you wanted to make one smaller. I'm just going to go around this screw that is in there that holds this frame together and tie this bow right in the middle. And then using that same tail from that knot, I'm going to go ahead and make another knot. And this is how we're going to hang it. Just like that. And you can trim it off. So now you can just fluff it out and shag it up. And I want to go back now that I have it on and add a couple more leaves to just kind of extend that shape down instead of having it look like, you know, a ball on top of a ball. So now, I think the shape's a little bit better. And I want to add a little something right in the middle. And since we're working with pumpkins, let's grab up some little mini Dollar Tree pumpkins, whatever type that you like. Here's a couple. And I'm going to just cut one of these so that it lays flat. I'm going to cut it where I still have the stem on it. 
So I'm cutting like maybe a third of it off and just using my little utility knife here and then cutting that right off. Then I can add my hot glue and put it down in the center. You can skip this step or you could use a button or you could put a flower here or you could put another leaf here or whatever you like. Even a pine cone if you wanted to. So now I'm gonna take that piece of branch that came from Dollar Tree in a bag and I am going to put that right on top of that wood. It sits right there on top of that block perfectly. And there you have it. You could also stain that frame if you wanted to. That embroidery um, hoop if you wanted to. Or paint it. But I like the natural look. Next project is a branch can decor. Now this one is just too easy. So I've got this can. It's a leftover can from some seeds. And this is a placemat that I thrifted that has sticks in it. Now you could probably get sticks out of your yard. You can get sticks from wherever. But just get a bunch of sticks that are bigger than your can. That's what you want to do. So if your can's three inches, maybe try some five inch stick pieces. You can even get them in a park on the side of the road. I'm going to take some scrap burlap. This happens to be ribbon, but it doesn't have to be ribbon. And I'm going to trim it down so that it is the little bit just a little bit shorter than the sides of the can and that way I can wrap it around the can without it hanging over on the top or the bottom. I'm going to start on the seam and just put it down. Mine was already cut at a slant that you don't have to do that but it was already that way so I'm, I'm just going to go with it. And then protect your fingers here if you're using hot temperature glue and then continue around. And by the way, just because you have neuropathy or a little feeling in your fingers does not mean that you should not protect your fingers. You can still have damage and burns, and we don't want that to happen, right? We don't want to make the problems worse, so please protect yourself. I'm going to continue around on the top, because you don't have to do the top and the bottom. You can, you can just do the top, and it'll stay there perfectly for you. And you can trim off whatever you don't need and glue it down. Now that we have our base, we have something to securely glue our sticks onto. So I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue this time, and my glue gun, and I'm going to start fitting which sticks I think are going to be the best on here. They are not all perfectly straight, and I am totally fine with that. I know I use that term a lot, but it's really true. I don't sweat that small stuff. I like things being different. I like things being unique. I like to make things my own. That's why that's the channel name. You know, I like to make it my own. So I just encourage you to, if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't have to watch for one thing, but if you don't like it, you can just make it your own. You can just do what you like. You know, maybe you don't like using these natural sticks, so maybe you want to use popsicle sticks. I don't know. Whatever you think and you want to do is completely fine. So I'm just going to continue to add these around and add a little in the middle if it needs it. And going around and around. Look at all the different shapes and textures in the wood. I love that. Yes, I think it's perfect for fall. Definitely. So now to embellish it, you can use some of this gorgeous ribbon from Dollar Tree. Or you can use, this is from Amazon actually. But they do have pieces of little trim that you can get. I want mine to slightly overlap, I know I'm out of range here, but slightly overlap where the can top is so that you don't see that top. And then I'm just going to glue it down. I'm just going to use my hot glue. I've got one side glued down already and then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and put this next piece down. Then you can just trim it off at a slant, at, a, at an angle, square, however you want to do it. And so this is how it will look. Time consuming, yes, but it's easy to do. Then whatever picks you like to put in the top, go ahead and put them in. These are thrifted, you can see it has stuff on it. I'm just gonna bend those branches and stick it in the top. Love it, and that is a fall looking floral. I like it. I think it'll work very nicely with my rustic cottage decor, which is a splash of gold. Here are our, our projects. So we have the beautiful little planter in the bottom. Love this one. 
this frame up here with the beautiful dahlia on it and the bow the embroidery hoop please share this video if you like it and you think that somebody else would like it I appreciate it so much it helps my channel grow there's a lot of love in this community and I feel it I feel appreciated and I'm so glad to be able to share these things with you they make me happy I hope that they bring you some inspiration and make you happy as well Fall broom decor piece you could almost call this a swag if you wanted we're gonna start with some Dollar Tree leather tags I have some thrifted flowers so I have this beautiful cream colored hydrangea and some more of these other pretty rust colored flowers and then I have this pick that I thrifted but you can definitely use a couple of picks from Dollar Tree this one is really really thick very pretty and then this is a thrifted broom that I got from Goodwill all right so this is 36 inches we are going to cut this pick down into smaller pieces so this will kind of give you an idea one two three four five six seven eight you get about eight little pieces out of here you would probably need two or three of the Dollar Tree picks to do this and you can use whatever you like if you want to use leaves you can use leaves you can use grasses or whatever you like I'm going to cut apart the flower picks you want to leave a little bit of branch on there or stem on there because we're going to be using it to attach it to the wreath we're going to start with this grass piece right into the center top of the wreath then I'm going to put one on each side the broom itself is kind of thin and small and that's okay we're gonna beef it up with all this beautiful colored grass you can even go on the inside and push it up into there now because the broom is so tightly packed underneath where you can see the little braid in the top right corner these pieces will stick in here just fine if you're going to use this in the house so you don't have to glue it down unless you're making it to sell it and just continue along till you get that as thick and full as you like and I love this and I love that it extends beyond the the wooded part of the broom or the little stems of the broom I love it and now we're going to move to the upper part of the same little sweeping part of the broom I'm going to go right above the little the braid or the um, you see the line where the thread is I'm going to go right above it with one of those picks and kind of push it to the side now it's on wire so it makes it easy for you to give a little bend to your pieces same thing with the Dollar Tree picks they're on wire so you can bend them and if anything pops off generally you can just pop it right back on there so no worries about that now I'm going to put this other one on the left a little bit lower down than the one on the right just to give a little bit of interest I'm going to take the stem of this hydrangea and make a hook then I'm going to lay it down on the broom and push it upward so you can see here how we did that I have pushed it upward now I'm going to take the leaves and push them up on these flowers so that they can be seen I'm just adjusting my petals a little bit if you get a piece from the thrift store and it's kind of wild looking you can always use a little hot glue to arrange your petals and to make it look um, tighter instead of you know opened up so much whatever you like but I love these just the way they are and I'm just gonna put it on the bottom side and press it upward just like I did the other one we're gonna do that with all of the flowers you're gonna give it a little crook behind the back part and then just arrange your leaves once you get them pushed up this is not symmetrical and there's no certain pattern to this I love these colors I knew I had to use the broom when I saw these beautiful colored flowers they're so nice and then the little bud I'll put it right to the side sometimes you have to move it around a little bit um, to make sure that you get it in a tight part of the broom you don't want anything falling out so now I'm gonna add just a little tag here and I got out of camera range I apologize y'all know my process but I'm just adding hot glue and I'm just gonna put it down on the base of the broom and then push the little string part the leather string part just up on the inside where you can't see it you can cut it off if you want or use it for another project 
and this is how this little beauty looks love this this will not be taken apart this is going to be put right in my house perfect piece of fall decor i think here is this one hanging up you can put this on your door you can put it on a wall whatever you like beautiful if you want to put it outside your door just use a little bit of gorilla hot glue to make sure that all your pieces stay in place and you can do that just by putting it on the end of each pick before you put it into the broom. Do you like this one? I hope y'all have seen my other broom swag projects. Love them. And I will be doing more for more holidays. The sweater pumpkin wreath is going to be the next one. Taking this familiar Dollar Tree wreath form. This is a pumpkin. I have done many projects with this. I'm going to take a infinity scarf, which I got from a thrift store. Never used it because it's hot in Alabama. I'm gonna use the other tag and a variety of ribbons. We're gonna add some blue today, guys. Look at these white sunflowers. Gorgeous. Choose some greenery that you like. Anything that's gonna coordinate with your ribbons is kind of what I go by. Some orange hydrangea, some Look at these. I love these pigs. Witch hazel bush. This is the first time I've ever seen them. And then other little pieces like sedums or whatever. We're going to take some heirloom white and I'm going to spray paint this frame. While it's drying, I'm going to thread my needle with a little bit of this cotton thread and an upholstery needle. Just like you would a regular needle. Okay, once the frame is dry, you don't have to paint the back. We're going to start laying this on the top. Now the reason we paint it is because I don't want black showing through my white scarf. If anything shows, I want it to be the same color so it kind of blends in together. Now I am going to just start by laying this down. I'm not going to cut anything on this project. So, you know, if you feel comfortable cutting this and thinking that it won't unravel, then that is totally fine. Um, you can do whatever you would like. You know, you can also use an old sweater to do this if you find something at thrift store or something that you're not using anymore. Maybe you got a coffee stain somewhere on the sweater. You could cut it up and use the chest piece to go over your wreath. So I'm just going to start tacking it down. I don't want to pull anything tight because I don't want the ribs underneath to uh, be very pronounced. So the ribs, what I mean is the wired pieces underneath the pumpkin. I don't want that to be pronounced. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to pull around and use my little clamps. This is the easiest way for me to do it. It holds everything in place. It kind of gives you an extra hand. And that is very important when you have small hands. Or maybe you have arthritis in your hands. This makes it easier too. We take our help where we can get it. And these are just little clamps that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to continue all the way around. I like to go on my flatter surfaces first and then work on the curves. And this is how it is going to look. And now all my little lines are together. I'm going to take my threaded needle and just go through underneath where the stem is. And I am going to tie that in a triple knot. You can do a double knot. You can do a triple knot. The reason I'm tying it to the frame is because if you tried to put the loop through that very loose weave of the fabric of the pumpkin, it would just come right out. So if you tie it to the frame, it's going to stay exactly where it needs to be. You can trim off what's left to keep it nice and neat. And then I'm just going to go to the inside. You can see what I'm doing here. It's easier to just watch and just go over, move your thread out of the way. If you try to keep your head, your, if you're right handed and you're using the needle in the right hand, try to keep that thread under and around your left hand. And that'll keep it from getting tangled up. Um, around the other clips and things that are on your pumpkin. It took me a few little tries to get this right, but once I started doing it, I had my process down and it went pretty quickly. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to keep it under my hand. And I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm doing about maybe like a half inch, moving over a half inch. And then when you get to the end, you can just make a couple of loops and knot it off. 
trim it down and then if you've got further to go go ahead and do that entire process again looks nice doesn't it you can barely see it so you want to use whatever type of cord is going to all match. done this is how it's going to look nice nice and smooth nothing is stretched too tight then I'm going to just, on the inside, like I said, I didn't cut it, so I'm just going to put some glue on there. You're going to please use a cool temperature so that it doesn't melt your fingers, burn your fingertips off. And then just pinch it together, hold it together, and then once that's down, you can add some hot glue or cool temp glue, whichever, underneath. And then hold it down, flip it over, and then you can just kind of cup your hand on the top and press your hand underneath onto your hand above and this is going to help hold it if you see on the right that's how it looks when it is complete and you won't see this part because you're not going to put this on a glass door it's not that type of a wreath it's going to go on a wall or something with a back on it so i'm just going to go around and, and continue to press down and add a little bit of glue any place it looks like it needs to be um, you know stuck down and in place just to give it a nice profile once we flip it over now time to work on the floral part I'm going to use a scrap of cardboard and a scrap of floral foam or foam whatever you have I'm going to add some glue here and I've just got it propped up on a box so you can see it and I'm going to press these two together it's going to kind of melt them together around the, the um, stem of the pumpkin so here's my beautiful white sunflower that I've chosen to use mine were thrifted but you can definitely get these at Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna put these leaves right on the back of the flower. That was easy enough, right? Sorry, out of angle again, out of camera angle, but you can see this is how it will look. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of these floral picks. They are, um, a little sparse they did come from Dollar Tree to make them a little bit bulkier a little thicker I am going to just add two leaves from one branch to a branch that already has two leaves on it now we have four leaves on our branch you see how it's got a little curve in it and that's so it will face forward instead of outward yeah I don't want it to face the sides I want it to be kind of facing forward for this project so here's another little branch beautiful it's got the little berries on it same thing give it just a little bend and then we're going to place it opposite on the bottom now I cut this flower stem I should have cut it longer than that but you'll see I'll fix that later no worries about that I'll fix it later okay so I'm gonna take these little hydrangeas I think these came from the Dollar Tree but I've had them for a little while so I can't recall for sure but there's only a couple of little pieces on each stem so to make those thicker, I'm going to put them in sets of three. I'm going to use my floral wire to just hold those together. You can use floral tape if you want. And then I'm going to put the entire set of three all in one place. Because hydrangeas are full, right? And I don't know why I am so loving hydrangeas this fall. I have done several projects already with fall colored hydrangeas and I'm, I'm loving them loving them loving them all right so now we're going to go up so we have the bottom right and the top left with the hydrangeas and then i'm going to start adding the little witch hazel pieces these add so much interest and that blue with that orange is stunning do you like that i mean that's not this is not typical for me i don't usually do the blue but this year seeing that orange and that blue together is beautiful so i've done a couple of things different i'm learning i'm going with the flow y'all just just a little bit here and there now i'm not going crazy but just a little bit so you're going to continue to add in picks where you feel like you need them i'm going to add my little flyaway pieces here my little blue berries um, with the little blue seeds instead of using the yellow I decided to add the blue just to put a little more blue you can use whatever color you want and those also came from Dollar Tree these were not in with the seasonal stuff they were in with the regular flowers uh, in case you're looking for these they look really pretty in this don't they so you're just gonna add these here and there and you see me struggling to find the little piece of foam back there no problem I just keep going with it 
and you're gonna add them wherever you feel like you need a little little extra pizzazz and then of course you don't want to leave the bottom open so we're gonna add one there kind of makes my flower a little squished up doesn't it if I would have left the stem longer the flower would not be squished so you just leave your stem a little bit longer I want the flower there for now though because it helps give me placement of where I am going to put my pieces around it because that's kind of the center stage of the arrangement part now we're going to make some little picks with our ribbons so the orange ribbon and the blue and white ribbon came from Dollar Tree and the cream colored burlap came from burlapfabric.com so I am just going to cut these into pieces um, that are nine inches long and I'm going to do sets of three because we're gonna make three picks with three pieces of ribbon each I'm gonna dovetail my ends you can do slants if you prefer that I would not recommend that you leave this type of ribbon without a cut because they will fray this is like a satin type ribbon it does have wire they all have wire and that is very important when you're making these picks because we need to be able to style them or position them and have them hold their placement so this is all we have to do to put these picks together and this is easy isn't it you're gonna take a piece of jute grab it flip it over I'm just kind of gathering with my fingers a little bit and you can do it this way if you want but you don't have to you can just cinch it up and then arrange them then I'm going to tie this then I'll kind of arrange a little bit to make sure that I fix the places that flip over give it a few knots you could use floral wire here if you would prefer also now what I'm using for the pick is just little pieces of the branches where I have cut flowers off of picks before so you know you always have the stems left I save those because they're really good for using in projects now I'm going to add hot glue in the middle put that little pick there and then tie it tightly down this is going to give it a lot of security and then it glue needs to be dry completely before you uh, try to place it in your arrangement so this is why the wire is important you see how it has uh, all that dimension in it some are raised above others you've got little curves in the ends if you didn't have wired ribbon these would just flop around cute so we're gonna do that three times and we'll have three of these beautiful little picks so just like when I'm making a bow, I fluff the heck out of any ribbon I get. Um, if you watch me for any length of time, you know that. It's important, and I love to do it. Love it. Love it a lot. So now I'm just going to start placing these in where, again, I'm just kind of feeling like I want them to be. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. And I'm not putting these in a particular um, pattern or angle. I just like it over here, so this is where I'm going to put it. This is where my flower being sunk in needs to be removed. So I'm going to put the little witch hazel in that I pulled out when I pulled out my flower. And I'm just going to go ahead and add these picks in. Here and there, uh, a lot of people like to work in a triangular pattern. But in this particular situation, I did not do that. I just, again, put them where I felt like I needed them. Or where they would look nice. And I put one up here. Now I'm going to add a longer stem onto my flower, my beautiful sunflower, and then place it back down on the inside. Now it sits above the rest of it and it's not sunk in. Doesn't that look better? Yes, that looks better. So I think we could do a little something extra here. Y'all, those colors are beautiful. Love them together. All right, so now I'm just going to remove the hanger off of this little leaf. And we're going to use it to make a bow to go on the top and the bow is going to cover up the little hole okay so you can put that wherever you would like but let me show you how to make the bow first you're just going to wrap it over on itself because this has been cut so now i have a little piece that i cut to go around the middle i'm going to trim it down add a little bit of hot glue here and i'm going to grab another floral pick and use that as an extra finger to push that down in place and look at our little bow cute now with a little bit of hot glue I can put it right over the hole in the top of that leaf 
and I am thankful that it fit nicely. Now we're going to make a pick out of this leaf. So we're just going to grab another little branch here and hot glue it down on the back and then decide where we want to put it. And at first I was thinking I would put it on the left side, but then I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the right. So I just pressed it down into the foam on the right. And this is how it looks. Okay, so if you're not liking this blue, what colors would you have used in this project? You could always have used a yellow sunflower if you would like. You could use a different color um, scarf, you know, and then go off of that. Pick your florals based on that. That would certainly be good as well. And you can make it smaller. If you don't like such a, a big floral area on the top, you could also leave off the ribbon picks if that's not something that you like. Or you could use buffalo chick if you're into that. I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock. The next craft is a pumpkin tower. Now this is not a topiary. I've done those in the past, but this one's a tower. I'm going to use a cone of foam. I got a thrifted piece that is gorgeous and it came from Kirkland's. Beautiful. It's a candlestick. And then a variety of pumpkins. This is a flocked garland that I got at the Dollar Tree Plus and then they're the ones that are on picks. There are the ones that are sweater, there's leather pumpkins, there's tiny pumpkins, big pumpkins, green, white, whatever you like, and then some thrifted picks. I'm going to carefully take the rope off of here and glue my stem back down. So if you're going to take your rope off, just be careful. It will sometimes show underneath the, uh, the white, but you can go over that with a little bit of paint if you would like, or you could just leave it alone. Whatever you prefer. Maybe you could even use brown there if you wanted make that stem look a little bit better. Doesn't match perfectly, but I'm perfectly okay with that. So I'm going to break my picks in half because we don't, leave, we don't need an entire stick. We just need to use something to hold it down into this foam. I am not using glue here. It would take a whole package of glue and it would be a big old mess. Now you see the pumpkin hangs down longer. If you want to sit this down on the table and not raise it up, you would want your pumpkins to be sitting flush with the bottom and not extending below. But since mine is going to be on a candlestick, we want them to hang over the edge because I don't want to see the foam, right? We want to cover that completely up. You're going to add a variety of pumpkins. I do suggest that you put the bigger pumpkins toward the bottom and then as you work your way up, add the smaller ones. That way you keep the cone shape. And that's kind of the idea with this pumpkin tower is to keep your um, that shape. So I'm just going to add along here and there. There is no pattern. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have too many of the same color in the same spot. And since you're not gluing this, as you're putting them down, you can remove them just like right there. And this is like the perfect way if you have accidentally went overboard and you have a ton of pumpkins in your stash, which I had a ton of pumpkins because I had a lot donated to me. This is like the perfect way to use them and make a beautiful centerpiece or tabletop decor or to go on your mantle, whatever you like. This is like the perfect way to use them. And because we are not gluing them in place, we can also take these apart at some point and use them for projects for maybe next year or the end of this year. Perfect. It works out for everybody. So some of these pumpkins actually came off of those picks, um, those darker orange ones that you see. They actually came off of the picks. And I like all of those colors together. I thought I had a lot of pumpkins, but in the end I was scratching around trying to find what else I had. And then I remembered that I had bought some of those cream colored pick pumpkins that they had out this year. And they were great to go in those little small spaces. But you can see there are still little gaps and spaces in there. And this is where the greenery comes in. So I'm going to grab some of that pale greenery and start pushing those leaves into the foam underneath. Some have berries, some don't, some have acorns, just whatever you feel like you want to use. What do y'all say? And I'm asking the people from the south because I have heard acorns and I have heard acorns. I accidentally said acorns one day and my kids almost laughed me completely out of my yard. 
but yeah. Um, what do y'all say? Which way do y'all pronounce it? People up north, you're probably not going to understand what I'm even talking about. And that is okay. We just have silly ways in the south sometimes. It just is more, more to love about us, I guess. Okay, so you can see I've added in all of the pale ones that I like. And I've tried to put um, some of the berries up top because the top is going to be, it's going to have a lot of berries on it. That's going to be like the topper of this little tower. These little pieces I just thrifted um, this past week, and I'm going to pull all of those off of the plastic. They're single pieces, and I'm going to add them to the middle of each of the little areas um, where I have the pale colored greenery. I think this is like the perfect way to add more orange into it because some of those pumpkins are orange, you know. I don't want this to be completely pale colored or cream colored. I want it to have some of that richness that I love so much about fall. That rustic vibrancy, I guess you could say. So I'm just going to add those in, in the middle of each of those little bundles of the pale stuff. And I do this continuously. I turn it around and around to make sure I've got my gaps covered. And then I had a little bag of these little berry pieces. I think there's like little picks that you can get at Dollar Tree that I got this year. And I'm going to add those in around the top. It's going to help keep the shape. We don't want anything too bulky up there. We want this to still look like it is, you know, a triangular form. And this is how it's looking. And I am loving it. There are still a couple of gaps, and I do address those, so don't worry about that. I want to kind of keep it balanced. I like it. Now we are going to give it a stand. So this is kind of indented here. I'm just going to use an ornament, a little wood slice ornament that happens to be the exact same thickness of the um, that we need so that the bottom of the cone will sit on top of it. I'm going to add some fix hall adhesive that comes from Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. And it's on my cool setting because, you know, if it's on hot, it can melt it. And I'm going to try to get my placement in the center here. If it's not perfectly straight, that's okay because you can go back in and add more leaves around the bottom and you'll never be able to see it. Once it's cooled off, look at this little beauty. Oh, I love it. I love it. I wish I had more green pumpkins in there, but I didn't buy enough. But I love it. So you've already seen the first project, which is the broom, and here are the last two. And it helps my channel and lets YouTube know that I'm doing a good job and making quality content. And it's a huge way to give me a thank you. It really, really makes me feel better to know that you like and appreciate all the hard work that goes into having a channel and making these creations. And some things that you can look at that will bring you joy in your home during the holiday season and really all year the long. The very first project is going to be a leather pumpkin, I guess you could call it a wreath. So we're going to take this Dollar Tree wreath form and mine came from Goodwill, of course. You can see it's already been used, it's kind of sad looking, but I'll fix it up. I'm going to use a piece of fabric that I thrifted, and this is a faux leather. You can use an old purse, you can use an old jacket, maybe you got an old skirt, an old pillow. Now I've got some of these fall colored eucalyptus leaves and these beautiful oak leaves. And then I have some dried looking hydrangeas in brown and cream and this really pretty peachy color. Perfect for fall. I'm going to cut this one off and I'm going to hang on to my stem going to use that in a minute. These are some berry picks from Dollar Tree. Alrighty, so I'm going to start off by making sure that I have enough piece, uh, I have a wide enough piece and long enough piece for the form. I'm going to get my finger protectives and my clamps. Now I'm silly. You see I already have my finger protectors on. You don't need them at this point. I, I have no idea what I was thinking when I did this. I was just so excited when I had the idea to do it because I have never seen one. I really wanted to share it, so I went a little bit nuts. I was kind of rushing through it, you know, going with the flow. But you get the drift. You won't need your finger protectors yet. So you're going to start taking your little clamps. These came from the Dollar Tree. I believe there's six in a pack, and I went ahead and, and I just have two packs because I use these all the time. And I'm going to just kind of stretch this over the frame and clamp it off where um, I need it, where I think I'm going to need to glue it down. So just making sure that it's enough to cover completely over. 
and start laying it out exactly where it's going to be when I start putting the glue down to hold this to the frame. Continuing around, this is not a, like a stretchy fabric, so you just kind of pleat it where you need to, and you can flip it to the front and make sure, you know, that everything is where it needs to be. If you pull too tightly on your fabric across these forms, it will kind of deform the shape of it. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to continue around. Whoop, they want a fingertip until you get all the way around. And I wanted to leave this in so you could see exactly how you're going to be doing it. Okay, see, this is why we don't glue it first. This is why we place our clips, look at it, and then go back, look at the front, and fix all the little areas where we need to retuck and fix the little pleated areas. You want everything to look nice and neat. Then, once you get it in place, you can start adding your glue. Put your glue gun on cool. Do not use hot temperature or it's going to drip off of your wreath form rather than clinging to it so that you can glue this down. So keep it on cool, put your finger protectives on, uh, protectors on, and then begin to place this down. Just remove one clip at a time, just kind of uh, lightly pull, and then press down and clip it in place. Same thing here, remove a clip, gonna go along, see how it clings to that? That's exactly what you want. Pull it over, you can kind of roll it down and that way it the glue is going to get the fabric on both sides it's going to catch the front side and the back side and it will make a little tunnel like across your pieces of wire if that makes sense i hope that makes sense this is just going to give it more security this way and you don't have to worry about it popping off i do recommend that you use something like a gorilla glue here just to be on the safe side because you do put just a little bit of tension on the fabric and you don't want anything to come unglued. I also do not recommend that you put this outside because it is a fabric and it, if you live in a humid hot climate like I do, it may cause the glue to melt and the fabric to um, possibly mildew and that would be just yuck. So this is an arrangement that you would probably want to just keep on the inside of your house. Okay, so we're going to continue along just like this. Left this in there for um, you guys and gals who ask that I not do everything in high speed. You wanted to see exactly what was going on, so I'm going to leave this in here for you. I'm not concerned about the extra fabric. I do not want to cut it off at this point. We're just going to glue down all the way around until we're back to our starting point. So who is having fall weather? We're not having any, of course. It's still summertime here, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it's been so hot. So, so hot in Southern Alabama. What's your weather like today? Is it nice? Do you have rain? I love a rainy day, but I do not like the humidity that comes afterwards. Not at all. Okay, so we're almost all the way around. We're almost done here. Keep going, and you can see, if you look all the way around, that the fabric is cupped all the way around. Now, you can very easily take your scissors, very sharp scissors, of course, and, and be careful, and then go along the ends of those clips, and you can trim off anything that you don't need. If you leave your clips in place, this will ensure that you do not cut it too short. See there? Nice. Very nice. And then, when you're sure that everything is cool, you can just take all of your clips off and then we'll flip it over and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh my goodness, I love this. Now I know Dr. Dollar Tree has some, um, they have some panels of leather there but I don't think they're big enough. Okay, so I took that stem and I'm just using it to kind of, I'm going to use it as a base to put our swag on top of the pumpkin. But you can use, it's about a foot long, so whatever you have, you know, if you've got, um, a stick or something that you want to use you can certainly use that or if your hydrangeas have long stems you can just leave them long and then just wrap them around each other and that would be fine too but this gives me an idea of how big I want my swag to be on the top of the pumpkin so I get my proportions right so I'm just gonna put the dark on the edges and I'm going to move them down a little bit place the lighter ones on the inside 
these are so pretty these came from the thrift store but I can tell you right now that I have seen these at Hobby Lobby so there's no telling what they originally cost and then I'll put that peachy color one right in the middle I'm just gonna flip it over so I remember where everything is and I'm gonna use my zip ties to put this together if you don't have zip ties that's not a problem you can just use your wires for this you can use some jute cord if you need to use it if you have bread ties you can use those you know just be creative use what you have if you don't have any of that stuff you could always use some twine and then this is how we're gonna put it together I have white and black ties and mine came from the Dollar Tree and they're in the automotive section so they have a shorter one like I'm using now and they have some really long ones but this is a good size um, in my opinion for doing the crafts that that I do here on this channel they are suiting all of my needs so you can see here I'm just kind of overlapping the stems and just going over across that um, the stick there or that long stem that we had cut down Sometimes I put the zip ties on backwards when I get in a hurry and I have to flip them around. Okay. So I can use my, um, just pull those down because the zip ties don't, don't keep anything like where you can't move them. Like if you hot glued them, you wouldn't be able to slide them around. So using these zip ties will allow me a little more of an opportunity to kind of uh, arrange them a little bit better, you know, move them around. Then I'm gonna go across the middle to lock that one in the center. Okay, so this is essentially going to be what I would call the base of my swag because this is our starting point. This is our jumping off point, And then we're going to add and embellish to this. So these beautiful leaves, I know for a fact, came from um, Hobby Lobby because I saw somebody do a walkthrough and I saw these leaves but mine came from the thrift store I was so blessed to find these I could not believe it and I just knew when I saw them they would be perfect for this leather pumpkin because they kind of have that leathery look don't they and that beautiful rich brown so pretty so you're gonna get some options here I'm gonna show you if you wanted to do three like this and not have a stem on your pumpkin this is how you would do it and for me I'm just gonna trim it down and poke it up there in the top once you get so many in there they'll kind of lock together all those little branches will lock together like when you use a grapevine wreath and you don't have to use glue they kind of stick you can definitely reinforce it with some glue if you want but at this point I wasn't exactly sure where I was going with this swag and I do end up changing it in the end but I want to give you some options so if you like it this way feel free to do it this way and I only use three of those little branches of the the greenery there I'm going to pull my eucalyptus picks apart these are gorgeous Dollar Tree has some really pretty eucalyptus already out for fall too so you can look and find all colors I, I found like a purplish um, I don't know more of like a maroon kind of color the green I've seen brown there's a lot of different colors and of course the green you know depending on what color um, scheme that you like but I love the richness of this with the leather pumpkin so I kind of it just feels cohesive to me I mean what do you think I think it looks pretty good all the colors are meshing well together nothing is really jumping out at you it just looks it looks nice Again, I'm tucking those in, but if you know exactly where you want your items to be, you can go ahead and glue them. I just like to kind of get an idea before I glue anything down. Because then it's harder to fix. I mean, you can fix it, but it's a little harder and a little messier. So this is kind of what the swag is going to look like on top of the pumpkin. If you like it like this. And I'm just going to put it across the pumpkin. And I love the scale of it. I think it's perfect for the top this is how it looks with that third stem right in the middle but I decide I want to try something else so I'll show you in a minute what that's gonna be and go ahead and take those picks and put them randomly here and there and I left my I didn't edit out where I move things around because I want you to see that I do that too 
I don't always put stuff down in one spot and it's perfect and that's where I leave it. No, that is not true. That is called editing. I try to leave it out um, to keep the videos at us, you know, where it's, you can get under 30 minutes of viewing time, right? So I have to cut some things out, but I want you to know that I'm not perfect either and I do move things around too. So I'm gonna use my zip tie and go right through the stem of that wire pumpkin and zip it on tightly. And you can see everything's staying in there and that's not even glued yet, so it's pretty good. So this is how it's gonna look so far. I love it. What do you think about the leather pumpkin? So pretty. So this is where I'm showing you, I'll leave everything in. I'm going to move some things around, pull some things out, fluff some things up. I'm gonna remove those little picks that are hanging off the sides and I'm gonna place them a little bit lower. And don't you think that looks better? I think the proportion of it is much better in that area. Then I can go ahead and glue it down because I know that's exactly where I want it. It's kind of hard when you're working on a swag and it's not connected to the piece to really know how it's gonna blend and fit. So I like to do it this way. Whatever feels right to you is exactly how you need to do yours. Just be inspired and do what you want. Now I just ran out in the driveway and grabbed up a stem. This little piece of a limb or a branch um, was where we had a tree cut down and it was just left behind and I grabbed it up and thought it would be perfect for this pumpkin and I zip tied it on. So now we have a little stem in the top and it's a natural looking stem. You could definitely use something bigger, something smaller. You could leave it off or you could use that little um, extra leaf pick. Okay, the, the next project is a wood leaf set. I'm gonna use some Jenga blocks, some wood leaves from Dollar Tree, a piece of pretty fall paper, and then some more of that same leather. I'm going to trim this down so that one of these pretty leaves can then be covered in, in that pretty paper. So I'm just gonna trim this down where it's more workable. I'm gonna use some spray adhesive. Now the spray adhesive was coming out kind of chunky here, so I had to clean the tip and then spray it a couple of times. And before it dried, put it down on my leather piece. Press it in place really, really well before I flip it over, because it takes a minute for that glue to kind of stick. Then I'm gonna quickly flip it and then work out any of the bubbles that are in the side of it. I'm just holding it in place and then pressing it out with my hands. You can also use a roller if you want to do it that way. I'm going to use my little, uh, my little knife here that comes from the Dollar Tree. Love these things. Yes, they are sharp, so you have got to be careful. If they do come in a three pack, that makes it pretty awesome. So I'm just going to trim as close as I can, as neatly as I can, around this pumpkin. Now, I did reinforce the tips with a little bit of hot glue just to hold that in place so I could quickly get this project out for y'all. I'm going to go on to the other leaf and add a very nice, thick, evenly coat of glue on the back. This Elmer's glue is purple, so it makes it really nice so you can see exactly where you put the glue and where you miss spots, so it's good. While the school stuff is on sale, go ahead and grab some of these and add to your crafting toolkit. All right, so I'm gonna flip it over and it fits great on this piece of 12 by 12 um, crafting paper or decorative paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you wanna call it. Use whatever you have for this too. Whatever color you like, whatever you have. These leaves were used in another project from last year. That's why they're painted. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over and be sure that we roll all of this down. I want it to stick to my glue nice and evenly. Everything to become one. Now you can use your scissors and just go ahead and start cutting pieces out. You don't have to fussy cut if you don't have fine um, tip scissors here. I'm going to show you what you can do. Cut the majority of the paper off. You know, it doesn't take long to do this. Just cut it off and then we will um, trim it down a little bit finer with this. If you want to do it this way, you certainly don't have to. If you don't, I have another option for you. But I'm just showing you here how close and clean the blade gets. You can really get in those spaces 
really well and just cut that off. Again, if you don't wanna do it that way, that's fine because we are going to sand it down. I wanna give you a lot of options so there's no excuses for not crafting. Grab a fingernail file, y'all. I love this. You can get into all those corners and round spaces and all it really is is a piece of sandpaper on a stick, right? So why not use it to sand your projects? You can also use those um, nail files from Dollar Tree. Have you ever tried using an emery board for sanding? Pretty crazy, but it works. And you can get big packs too, so that's awesome. So I'm gonna use furniture repair markers, and I think I use maple. I forgot to show you the color here, but I think I use maple. And I'm just gonna go around the edges of the leather one so that these edges don't stand out. You can use a little bit of paint here if you want, but I found that the furniture marker makes it really easy to go over narrow spaces, and I could quickly wipe it off of that leather if I went over. We're not gonna do anything to the edges of this one. And this one has the dark edges now, and it blends in a little better. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to use a furniture repair marker here. Any color that you want, I just pick this one out and then I'm gonna color these blocks because I don't want this pale color to show. I'm just gonna go ahead and color them. I'm gonna do four of them and two of them will be used on the back of each one of these leaves to help stand them up. The stem is so narrow, you can't stand them up just on the stem. I mean, you might, but then you would be able to see your the appliance that you put on there to keep it standing up, you'd be able to see that. And I don't want to see that. I want it to almost be invisible, like it's floating there. So I'm going to lean this on its side where the side is touching. And we're going to put it right there on the side of the leaf. We're going to do it on the left for one, and we're going to do it on the right for the other leaf. That way you can put them together if you wanted to, or you could stand them separately. You could also make this one piece overlapping the middle if you would like and connect them together. So now I'm putting this one on and it looks good there. Find my position, find my spot. I know I'm gonna need to put my glue there. So you can do it like this. So you put the glue on the block or the glue on the leaf, really doesn't matter. And you wanna stand it up while the glue is drying so that you know it's balanced. And that's what I'm doing, giving it a minute to dry and making sure it will stand. Now when you get ready to display these, you can use a tiny bit of that thick mounting double stick tape on the bottom of your Jenga blocks and that will help really hold them in case you have a house where your, you know, things jiggle around. Okay, next is a leather bottle accent. Y'all, I'm loving it with this leather this year. So this was just a salt jar. It had salt in it and uh, I saved it because I really like it, or the bottle. I'm gonna use some of these beautiful leaf rub-ons. Yes, rub-ons actually work on, on this. I'm gonna use those from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some more of that leather and some of these furniture nails or brads or tacks, whatever you have. You can spray paint tacks if you want to. And then you're gonna have some tools here. I'm gonna use my white chalk pen here that came from Dollar Tree and use it on the back side of this fabric and just draw out a circle that I know is going to fit on the front of my bottle. Now I am going to draw a narrow band, almost like a belt, to connect to it, whatever size or width you want. And then I'm gonna cut that out with my rotary cutter on my mat. Easy. Now you can use the leather from the Dollar Tree to do this project because it's smaller and you won't need as large of a piece. So you could definitely use it on this. Okay, so I know I want it to go around the center of the bottle like this. And this leather piece is definitely big enough to go around. I'm gonna cut out the circle. I'm just gonna cut it off the big piece and then I'm gonna trim it down right along that white line so that I have a circle like this. And you see how it fits perfectly on the bottle? That's why you need to measure it first. Then I'm gonna choose a leaf. I was so excited when I did a little sample with this to see that it actually works on this fabric. Now I don't know if it's gonna work on all fabric, but it worked on this one. I'm gonna cut it down to a manageable size, then I'm gonna apply the leaf that I like on top of it. If you press it down just a little, 
it kind of it will kind of stick just a tad for you kind of hold itself in place just a little bit before you start really pressing it down so I've kind of centered it here and then I'm gonna take my plastic um, squeegee or whatever kind of tool you want to call this it's actually to be used on vinyl and I'm just gonna start pressing down and um, from the center outward and I'm gonna hold it in place because I don't want it to skip up on me so just take your time here hold it in place and then I want you to see how good this turns out oh my goodness peel it off slowly in case you need to rub it down a little bit more y'all would you look at this leaf it's gorgeous look at that oh I'm so excited about this this has really opened a door for opportunities in other projects knowing that those will stick to this type of fabric so exciting okay so I'm just gonna take my little um, pliers here these are bull nose pliers a lot of people ask me about these they are wonderful and I use them all the time in crafting I'm gonna cut those down so that the heads are flush now I need to find a positioning for this round disc you can always use uh, lead this long and wrap it around the bottle but I wanted to make it a little bit shorter so I'll show you what I did I'm going to use the center almost like a belt buckle and I'm using some E6000 here this is just the one that's branded for the uh, jewelry because it has a smaller tip but I took the tip off of it if you use hot glue on some fabrics it will pucker and I don't like that look so that's why I'm using the E6000 rather than hot glue here and I'm going to use my little clamps to hold it in place for just a little while so it has time to kind of adhere now I'm going to wrap this around and this is when I decide I don't want to overlap it completely I just want to overlap it just a little bit so I'm going to trim it off here leaving just enough so that I can tuck it and glue it underneath the round part and I think that's perfect once my glue is dried which doesn't take very long if you're careful with it I'm going to take the clamps off and then wrap it around the bottle kind of getting that centered so that it's the circles in place I don't want it to stick up above the bottle um, curve there I'm gonna wrap it around hold it in place with my fingers same process as before add my glue down here and then just press that down into place I've already kind of eyeballed it and made sure that it's in the right spot so then I decided to do a band around the top so I'm just gonna cut a narrower piece and I'm gonna fit it around the top once I know how much I'm gonna need of that I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and then I am going to cut a little triangle in the end of it just like that and I like the way that looks I'm gonna put the little joint in the back now this will slide on and off the bottle which is fine if you want to be like me and use your projects over and over again so I don't want to glue it down to the bottle itself I'm gonna use a little bit of double stick tape um, and I'm just going to use that to help hold this in place and it would be perfect it'll last all fall season like this and if I want to change it out I can change it now I'm gonna move on to those little um, furniture nails there I'm gonna add some hot glue I got it on the cool temperature here so that I don't burn my fingers and then I'm just gonna position it where it looks like this was tooled together rather than glued together what a pretty look and I love that they're a bronzy or brown like color because they really blend in nicely with the leaf and the leather this is oh my gosh this does not look handmade to me this looks like something you would buy at a store look at this isn't this gorgeous oh if y'all like it please give me a thumbs up yes I work hard yes just like y'all do okay so now we're gonna use this as a vase and I'm just gonna cut down some uh, extra pieces that I've saved from other projects and the hydrangea I had an extra one of those so they match perfectly and you can just make them into a little bundle here and use them like this if you would like and it's really pretty it'll fit right in the top and this is how it will look so this is how this looks I went ahead and took the hydrangea out because I think the greenery looked better there I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you have not already it means so much to me I am active in the comments I am always here to answer your questions and talk to you you're very important to me your viewership is important to me 
And I just love doing what I do with you guys cheering me on. I really do. It's such a blessing. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So you can see our beautiful pumpkin hanging here. And look at these leaves. They're so pretty. Love it. If you're loving this video, please share it with a friend or family who would also find this interesting and inspiring. I always love to bring a little bit of joy to everybody every day. Here's another look at that beautiful bottle, which I cannot get enough of that. And the leather leaf. It almost looks like it has veining in it, doesn't it? I'm okay with that. It's not perfect, but hey, we're not perfect either. We're perfectly flawed, and that's okay. Leave me a comment. Do you like these leather crafts, and which one do you like the best? These are so pretty. I love the combination of the colors and the richness. And look at that blue in there. That's really nice, isn't it? The first project is a card tag. I'm gonna start off with some plaster chalk paint and a brush, some ribbons from Dollar Tree. This is some trim that I have, and you can get some at Dollar Tree. A thrifted tag. And this is like an MDF, I think. And a beautiful card that I got at the thrift store. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to take the hanger off of my tag. I started off by attempting to peel off the paper here. It's kind of messy. Now I'm going to take my card apart. Now you can just cut this if you want, but I learned this trick a long time ago when I was a kid. So you just turn your card inside out, squeeze your fingernails on it, Make a tight line with your fingernails. Flip it over, do the same thing again, and then when you lay it down, you can just easily pull it off. I love this beautiful picture. All right, so I'm going to take that chalk paint and cover up my little tag here. Give it a nice, clean, blank slate. And this will be the back of our tag. We want it to look good on the back too, so this is how it's gonna be. So now, since we don't have to be painting, we're just gonna be covering up. It doesn't really matter what the front looks like, right? So I'm just going to flip it over and use my little craft knife on my um, mat and then cut it off. And I like to just rotate this around, that way I don't lose my placement and I can just keep on working. Okay, and this part does not have to be perfect. So I'm gonna use my Mod Podge here and a sponge brush. And since that card stock is thick, I'm gonna use quite a bit of this Mod Podge. And we're going to use it like a glue. Now, you can use a glue stick if you would like. Or you could definitely use like a school glue if you would like. You know, it's back to school time, so everybody is taking advantage of the good deals on school supplies. So it would be a good time to use some school glue here if you have it. Just going to give it a good coat all the way up to where the top of the card is going to be. And it's tacky now. I tested it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down on the tag. So now we have a nice clean front and a nice clean back. I'm gonna press this down with my hands first. I like to hold it in place so it doesn't slide off. And then I'm just gonna use this little tool here. You can use a credit card or any flat edge. You can use your ruler if you want and smooth it out. I'm gonna add some Mod Podge over the top here and then I'm gonna go all the way over the card with it. It doesn't take a lot here. I'm just using what's left in the brush because I want it to have the same finish from the top to the bottom. Make it look a little bit more like one piece. And then I'll give that some time to dry. And you can use a heat tool here if you would like to dry it. Now, just to make those edges look a little bit rougher because we love rustic on this channel, I'm just gonna use my sanding block because my paper was shredded there and go all the way around the edges. 
The idea here is to make those edges look like they are part of the sign and to make them appear as though this is painted on rather than a card stuck on a tag. So you're gonna continue around just like this. If you don't want to do it this way, you certainly don't have to. Say you don't have a sanding block, you don't have to do that either. You could use a little antiquing wax around the edges to make it look like it's a little more aged if you wanted to. You could use a furniture marker and trace it off, those little Dollar Tree furniture repair markers, whichever look you're going for. You can see I've got some of the brown showing through and I really like that. Now I'm going to embellish my tag and I'm going to use the ribbon to do that. I chose this gold and green because it happens to match the colors that are in the picture and it's fall and I wanted to incorporate these into my fall decor so these colors will do the trick. Now I'm using a little zigzag here with my hot glue so that you don't see a straight line underneath that satin ribbon because otherwise you would see it through the satin ribbon. As you can see it's just a little zigzag under there and I'm going very light with it and I'm going to do the same thing here to lay that green ribbon down and I'm going to overlap it onto the gold just a little bit so that there's no gaps in the seams. I'm going to flip it over, add some hot glue here and then just flip those right down with the I want to say curve but it's not so we're going to call that the angle of the top of the tag. How about that? I'm just gonna go right down here and press it into place. I wanna use my little beautiful lacy trim piece here right in the middle. Same little technique, we're gonna flip it over and then glue it down on the back. And then I'll use my scissors here to just trim off the excess. This will keep it nice and neat on the back. So if you wanted to trim it out, you could trim your tag out there on the bottom. But I like the way this looks. So no trim on the bottom for me. I'm going to use a hanger that came off of another project. Press it through that hole. Grab the knot and pull it through. I love this little piece. You could hang this off of a pegboard. You could hang this off of your doorknob. You could hang it off of a wreath. However you would want to use this, you got a lot of versatility here. And I hope you'll try this. The next is going to be a fall wreath. This is an 18 inch wreath. It's a little bit on the oval side, not completely round, but that's how it is with grapevine wreaths and stick wreaths. I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree embellishments as well as magnolias and the greenery that I got from the thrift store. Beautiful. These seed pods came from the thrift store as well. Pine cones, I have a variety of colors here because I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet. These beautiful thrifted pieces. And I'm gonna start by fluffing out my greenery. Now these pieces have already been cleaned and wiped down, so I'm just gonna fluff them out. I'm gonna fix everything where it looks natural, as it would be on a branch. I'm gonna do the same thing with my floral picks. And if you have any dustiness on your leaves, like I'm showing you here, you can use a big brush. This is just a big paint brush. Clean, of course, and dry and you can just dust these off. Get in between all your little petals and layers and down the stick and onto the greenery and you can just very easily do this. Now she's beautiful. I'm gonna take my greenery picks and just pick those off, cut them off, and then I'm gonna use a glue stick. If you decide you want to put it outside, you need to use glue. But for me, it's going to be inside and I am not gonna be needing glue. Your picks will go down and stick quite nicely in this type of a wreath. So I'm just gonna start, I know that I don't want this to be uh, symmetrical and I want it to be thicker on the left side than on the right side. So everything's gonna be toward the bottom right. 
I'm gonna add in my next pick of Magnolia Greenery. And I'm just gonna press that in there. I'm gonna work kind of toward the center at this point. Now this was thrifted and I didn't have enough stem on here. So all you have to do is take a stem off of something else or a skewer or something like that. Take some floral wire and just tightly wind that around. Once you get it as secure as you need it, you can trim it off. Tuck your wires down because you don't want to be poking your fingers. You, do, you don't want to do that. We don't want injuries while we're crafting, do we? We don't want anything to slow us down when we're in the flow. So I'm just going to take that now. It's going to work nicely and I'm going to place it down. Perfect. So now the flowers can go in. I'm going to go to the top and I'm just going to add my beautiful magnolia on this side. And I'm going to continue around and let you see how I do that. I don't want everything lined up on the top of the wreath. I want some things to be on the kind of facing a little bit toward the outside and the bottom. And then we'll build slightly upward when we put in the next elements. So you can move your greenery around. You can pull some of those darker leaves through if you want. You can press some in the back. You know it's on wire. These uh, are good quality florals. They'll be on wire so you can easily move these pieces apart. Then I had some that were just, they weren't on a bigger pick. They were just singular leaves. I'm just going to add those here and there. And continue along with my flowers. I love magnolias. We have three magnolia trees on our property and they are just beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to do the seed pods and you can see that I've bent it so that it will face outward and not straight up. I'm going to cut it off to a manageable length and then go ahead and add those in. So I'm going to add one right at the top. I'm going to add one at the bottom, sort of toward the center. And at this point when I'm doing a wreath or a project, I kind of, I go by feeling. I uh, don't really think about what I'm doing. There's really no rhyme or reason. I just keep adding in. It's like I kind of get in the zone. If you're a crafter, I, you probably know what I mean here. I just go with what feels right. If I put something down and I don't like it, I just move it. It's not glued in, so it, you know that makes it convenient at this point. I'm just continuing along here and there. Now I'm going to take those little picks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put them in twos. Some will be single and some will be in twos and I'm just going to add those here or there. This is the part of the wreath that you could consider your flyaway. It's a little something to give it extra movement and interest. They're small. I love the colors. I love the colors in this wreath. This could if you didn't have the picks in there, it could probably be like a summer wreath. But the fact that we have those beautiful leathery looking brown leaves and all the brown from the seed pods, I think this is perfect for fall decor. Then you can just add in some of the little picks of um, pine cones or whatever you have that you like here and there. And I don't want to add a lot here, just a little bit for interest. And I think this turned out beautifully for fall. What do you think? I know magnolias bloom earlier in the year and at this point they've pretty much gone to, um, to the seed pods now. But to put those in there like this, I think they look really nice. The next project and the final project is going to be a fall sign. I've got this beautiful fabric. It does not have magnolias on it, but the flowers are similar enough, I think. And this grateful, thankful, blessed sign. Those came from the thrift store. I have some paint 
It's a spray paint and then my antiquing wax. I'm going to use a couple of different brushes. I just recently picked this up at the thrift store. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a little magnolia swag. And then I have this picture that used to be in my daughter's room and she has outgrown it. So I'm gonna use my heat gun here. Heat up those seams because they're glued and nailed down. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut the seam. Then I'm going to just take this tool here and this is like a, I don't know, a spatula of some sort. And then I'm going to pull the back off carefully and then remove the little nails that are down in here. Clean up my edges, remove all that paper and bulky glue. I'm gonna put my fabric down the pretty side down on the mat. I'm gonna lay the backing down and use it as a guide so that I can cut the fabric off. And this is my rotary knife, or my rotary blade, excuse me. And then I'm gonna use my Mod Podge to put it down. I'm going to add quite a bit here because I want that fabric to stay in place. And then using my brush, I'm going to be sure to go around all the edges, all of the corners, all across the middle and a nice even coat. So I want to take the opportunity to say welcome to any of you who are not familiar with my channel and have not been here before. If you've come over from, from Brenda's channel or from anybody in the playlist, you are very welcome here. I'm glad that you stopped by. I am always striving to bring you unique, budget-friendly DIYs. I use thrift and Dollar Tree supplies to make it economical for all of us. All right, so if you press it in place, I'm now gonna use my little Mod Podge roller and I'm gonna go all over it. Now this is gonna make that glue stick to the fabric and it's almost gonna appear as though it is painted down or if it was made as one piece. You can see how nice and smooth that is. Next, we're going to take this and spray paint it. I'm gonna use one coat outside. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna take this antiquing wax. I'm going to add a little water. This is my little water spray bottle here. I'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna make essentially a stain that will match the sign. Because it's kind of a gray wood now, I want to bring it to a richer color. So I'm just gonna take a nice soft paintbrush here and start adding this down. It's nice and watery and it moves really nicely across this wood. It, this was not a sealed wood, so this is gonna go nicely in here. We're gonna go around the outside, the inside, and all of the edges, except where we're going to be gluing the backing back down. You don't wanna put any antiquing wax there because it could interfere with the um, ability of your glue to stick. And we don't want the back popping off, right? So since this is a standing picture, we don't want this in the way. I'm just gonna glue it down just to keep that little stand from moving around. Perfect. Now I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax mixture here that we made, the stain, with a very soft round brush, and I am just gonna go all over this piece. My idea for this was to take it from that brass, gold, whatever color that was, that was on there, which actually was really pretty in itself. But I want this to look more like a wood piece. And uh, you'll, you'll see why in a moment. You'll, you'll understand in a moment. So keep going along here. You're gonna go in all the cracks. You're gonna go in every little detailed piece of those leaves. There are some seed pods there. There are some, um, all the petals of the magnolia, the center of the magnolia. Be sure that you thoroughly cover this in the wax. Y'all, we have reached 16,000 subscribers. Y'all are amazing. For y'all who have been here and who have been following thank you so much you do amazing things with this channel you really do being here and watching and following means so much to me all right now we're going to take the backing once this is dry we're going to lay it down and it is just going to pop back into place so just press it down and it will lock into place but we're going to be doing some things to the inside of this box so 
we need to be sure that it doesn't move around and that nothing pops out. So we're gonna go ahead and add some glue just to the corners because at some point in the future, I'm a, I may want to use this again. And I can recover this with something else, just pop the back out and just do something else to it. So this will ensure that that happens. I'm going to center my little sign right in the middle. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? I think that's so pretty. And although those flowers are not magnolias, I think they're gonna work great in this project. So I'm just trying to get an idea of where my center would be. Then I'm gonna add my hot glue. And this is Gorilla Glue, because this is gonna be, you know, it's kinda bulky, so it's gonna be kinda heavy. I don't want it to fall. And then I'm gonna add it where it looks like it's centered. Press it down nicely. And then look, this is gonna be like an embellishment on the top so that it looks like it's made onto the box. I love this. I love this so much. Once I get it in the center, you can check with your roller to just to make sure. I'm gonna press it down in place and hold it there to give that, chance, that a chance for the um, Gorilla Glue to grip. Now you're gonna use something like E6000 if you don't use Gorilla Glue. Look how gorgeous. So there are a couple of spots I missed. I'm just gonna go back in with a fine brush and get in the little cracks. And you can see here the details. You can see what I was talking about here. I wanna get in there. Now if you do a little too much, like I got a little too much there on that leaf, just grab a terry cloth of whatever type, old wash rag, old sock or something that you have, and just pat it and it will just go It'll stay down in the cracks and the top will come off. So it makes it perfect. I'm just reinforcing my shadows and stuff in there. And y'all, doesn't this look gorgeous? I love this. So what do you think about magnolias in the fall? I think this looked really nice. I mean, we use other flowers when they're not in season, right? So why not magnolias too? Beautiful. Here are the projects. I have three of them, the tag, the sign, and the wreath. Do you have a favorite of these three? Do you think you might try any of these? I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. I know you can. So you don't have a perfect thrift, thrift store, you know, you don't have a place where you can get thrifted things. Take something you already have at home and take it apart and Give it a new life. I do it all the time. I do two videos a week on Mondays and Thursdays at five Central Standard Time. And I would love, love, love to see you in my comment section. We have a lot of fun talking and chatting and getting to know each other. Thanks so much for The watching. first is going to be a wood tag duo from Dollar Tree. So you're gonna start off with some of these, you can use a round bead or something round with a hole in it. And I'm gonna use some window clings, a little piece of this paper, and then two of these Crafter Square signs from Dollar Tree. And these came out this summer. So I'm gonna be using the back. I love the wood grain on both of these. I chose these two signs because of the grain. And I'm gonna start off by taking some of my antiquing wax. I'm gonna water it down, just put it in a little cup. I'm gonna add some water. You just see me squirting the little, I have a little spray bottle here. And I'm going to use a chippy brush and just go back and forth all over this sign. Now, if you like a complete full coverage, you can do that. If you like it more streaky, you can do that. If you don't have any antiquing wax, you can use a brown paint that you water down to make your own stain. Whichever way that you choose to do this. And if you just have stain that you want to use, you could certainly just use a can of stain but be sure that it is in a well ventilated area when you put it down so now i'm just going to make sure that this is completely dry i'm just using my arteza dryer here my little heat gun just to make sure everything's dry i'm going to sit it aside and we're going to work on the next tag so this is just some um this came out of one of those crafting paper tablets and i just flipped through and i found this beautiful cream and orange i thought this would be really pretty for fall I've just traced it and cut it out to fit on the tag and because it's going to be a little bit short I've taken a scrap of here and I'm going to try to match the patterns up like that 
and it looks pretty good. There's a little space, but you won't be able to see when the project is finished. So keeping it lined up, I'm going to flip it over, trace out the little hole where the tag um, hanger is going to be, and then I can move the, the um, wood tag off and just cut out around the little spot that I traced. If you don't want to do this part, you could skip it and just punch a hole in it later um, with a stick or something if you wanted to. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top, just kind of holding it in place, flip it over, and then I'm going to trim that little piece out as well. So I'm choosing to use a matte Mod Podge here, but you can use school glue, you can use uh, double stick paper, you can use a glue stick if you wanted to. Now would be the time to get those glue sticks at Dollar Tree because Jot usually has um, extras in their school supply section. So just be sure instead of looking in the crafter section, you look over there in the specials for the school supplies and you can get a bigger pack and save a little money. Okay, so once I've got full coverage on here, I'm not going too crazy with the amount of Mod Podge that I put on it. I'm going to just press it down with my hands first, kind of centering it where it belongs. Press it down with my hands, and then I'm going to take my roller, and this is a Mod Podge roller, and just roll it out to make sure everything is nice and flat, and that every piece of that paper sticks to the backing. Next, I'm going to cover these. Now, these are actually little cedar dials that you put on the top of your hangers in your closet to keep the bugs out of your closet, right? Keep moths out. I found these at the thrift store and I thought, you know, these would be perfect size for the top of these tags. So that's what I'm going to do here. I, I picked out two of them, but I'm only going to need one. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to take my sanding block or you can use an emery board, fingernail file, a regular piece of sandpaper, whatever you choose. And I'm just going to shear off the edges by going down and away, down and away. And it will slowly start to peel off and then you can just remove it just like that. You get a nice clean finish and it looks store-bought. You don't have any raggedy edges on there. Plus, this is going to look really nice when we do the next step. So you're going to go all the way around your board, around the corners, around the edges, just like this. Looks good. If you like that finish, you can leave it that way. If you want to make it a little more rustic, go ahead and grab that mix that you already had made there with another baby wipe and just hit those edges. Just go right over those white edges of the paper and this is going to give it kind of an aged look. Let it overlap a little bit onto your paper and it just will kind of blend in with the edges and give it a nice beautiful rustic look. You can feather it out a little bit. You can drag your finger across the you know, any areas you want on that tag to add a little more richness. Whichever way you want to do it is going to be great here. I love to give y'all little tips just to bring your projects up from Dollar Tree to, oh my goodness, no way you got that from Dollar Tree. All right, now we're going to go over to the window clings here. I think these came from Dollar Tree, but if they didn't, they came from Dollar General. That may be a Dollar General tag you see there. So these were from last year. Um, they were donated to me. By the way, I have a P.O. box, so if you ever want to send me anything, you can do that through that P.O. box. We're going to leave the backing on the paper here and cut it out so that you can't see through it. This is going to be more like a sticker or an applique now. Go ahead and grab up any type of little applique or wording that you like to add to your second sign. I'm going to use this one. I decided to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on this and use a little bit more of the checked paper that I used on the big sign. So that's just going to kind of carry it over to the other sign and make it look a little more cohesive, I think. It's perfectly on my scrap. I'm going to press it down and I'm going to just iron it out. I'm going to roll it right on out. Cut as close as you can with your scissors and then you can go back over this with a fingernail file or with a, you know, your sanding sponge here, whatever you want to use. And you can use the same technique here that we used on the big tag sign to go around the edges, take that white down, and just make this look a little more rustic. Now I thought I was going to leave it this way, so I went ahead and added a little dimension 
with this and I'll show you how to do that. You're just going to take your um, finger and you're just going to push down and drag little lines, little curved lines, just like a pumpkin has curved lines. You can leave it like that if you want, but I thought, you know what? There's This came off of that same um, cling backing that this big pumpkin, the stack pumpkin came from, and it fits perfectly on those little appliques. So if you find this one, you can definitely do it just like this. If not, just leave it plaid. That's pretty too. I'm going to use some hot glue and fix this down. And the only section I have, um, I will address in a minute. I'll show you how to get the little stem down because it's too thin to use the hot glue. I'm going to go ahead, once this is thoroughly dry, glue it down. I'm going to position it where I think I want to have it. And then I'm going to just go ahead and make this look a little more old and rustic too, just so that everything blends in nicely together. I'm going to add some hot glue on it and then center it over the top of those holes. And look at that. Doesn't that look perfect? I love it. I love the colors and everything in this project. It's so pretty with that pop of blue in there. I'm usually so traditional, but I really love that navy blue in there. You might be seeing more projects with this for me. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue here. This is just regular glue. And I'm going to stick my stem down. Hold it for just a minute to let it catch. And then once it's dry, I'm going to loop these, the little tag hanger, right back through. We still have an extra one that we didn't have to use. And this is how this project is going to look. Such a simple tag project, such a uh, really pretty, I think, door hanger, or you could put it on your wall, or wherever you wanted to put it. Just a really nice rustic piece. The next project is going to be an embellished wood bird house. We're going to use a little wood house and a card. So just grab any card you see over in Dollar Tree in their card aisle. And then these furniture markers also came from Dollar Tree in a three pack. So I saw this card at Goodwill and I loved the color and the print. It's so cute with all the little birds and the fall leaves. And it fits perfectly onto this card. There'll be a little excess that's going to be removed, but that's okay. I'm just going to sit it on top kind of get my edges where they need to be and then I'm going to center it where I like it and off to the side is perfect so that made it really easy for me then you can just use your fingers to press down a bit on the angles or and then cut it out with scissors or you can flip it over on your cutting mat I'm just going to give you some options and trim it out with your blade and your cutting mat be super careful when you use a blade that you are not cutting towards your fingers because these things are sharp. I did get this from Dollar Tree. I think it was in a three pack y'all over in the automotive or tool section, but they see how the blade fits right under the little chimney there. All I had was one little piece that was still stuck and it just folded and popped straight off. All right, now see how nice that is. It's almost centered right in the middle of that house. I love it. So here are the three markers and I'm going to show you what each color looks like because they're all brown obviously but they all have a little bit different of an undertone. So I'll just show you here. You can freeze it and zoom in decide which color you like best. I've chosen cherry and then I'm just going to start coloring it in. You can use your antiquing wax here if you want to but for those of you who don't have the antiquing wax or a Walmart nearby but you do have a Dollar Tree you can stain things with these um, Dollar Tree furniture repair markers. That's what they're actually labeled as, I do believe. And I've used these on lots of projects. I even have fall projects that I use these markers on from last year and probably the year before. So, yes, you can use these markers to do your staining. So there's the roof, the sides, and the back. The front is clean because we don't need to waste our furniture marker on this, do we? We're not gonna be looking at this part we're just going to add some Mod Podge or school glue or whatever type of glue you want to use. I will say that once you put it down though, you need to let it dry before you start sanding off your edges or you will have your project shifting around. So be sure that it is dry. Just walk away, work on another project until it is set in place. I'm just putting a thin layer here of the Mod Podge all over the front and I'm going to place the card down right on top. Then you can press it down with your hands, roll it out if you would like, but you see how it shifts around? You gotta be super careful. Once it's dry, 
go ahead and get whatever you want to sand with. I love my sanding block. And start shearing off the edges. Y'all, I am almost at 15,000 subscribers. I got up this morning. I checked it. I have 13 more to go before August 1st to get to my goal of 15,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Thank you for all of you who have subscribed. There is going to be a giveaway, so be sure that you have your notification bell clicked when you are subscribed so that you do not miss out anything. Be sure that you check in the community tab um, as often as possible because sometimes I do my giveaways through there. I don't want to miss out. Okay, so I went back over my lighter edges with the marker. And then I'm going to use the same technique we used on the tags to go over the house to give it a more of a rustic look. More aged, more homey, whatever you want to call it. Distressed can be called many different things. I'm just going to go over all of the little white edges. I'm going to pull it a little more toward the front. You can see here how it kind of fades inward. I love that look. Love it. And then you can also just take your finger and if your background is like a stark white and you don't care for that, just go ahead and take your finger and drag it all the way across lightly like this and it'll take that brightness out of the white. The last is the light up gourd. Y'all this thing, I love this. It's so cute. Ugh. So you're going to take one of these light bulb terrariums from Dollar Tree. I got mine early this summer, but they should still be there. Some pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to use some of this. I believe this is petal blossom petal, petal blossom something spray paint. This is a little thrifted mushroom, but you can get little mushrooms at Dollar Tree. Some oak leaves from Dollar Tree. I'm not going to use the ribbon back there. And I'm going to use this rub on transfer sheet from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use a string of lights, but you'll see that later. Okay, so we're going to start by taking the lid off. Little tip for you when you are spray painting, use a bucket of rocks, a little dowel of whatever length you like, and then stick that on there. Now when you take it outside, you can get to all sides without touching it. All right, one good coat of paint. This is just going to make that chalk paint stick better to that plastic surface. So once it is completely dry, we still don't have our little screw on top. We left that off. Here's the tag for you. I'm going to start taking that chalk paint and I'm going to start putting it down on, the pump, on this pumpkin or, well, it's not a pumpkin. It's going to be a gourd, but it's actually a light bulb at this point. I'm going to go side to side with my paint all the way around and up to the top, just past the little area that screws on so we don't have any gaps where there's no coverage. I used two coats of paint to get the coverage that you will see here. Tried to use my little heat gun. I should have known better and I got a little dimple. You can see it underneath there. All right, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna go all over here. Don't worry about the little dimple. Do not use heat on the plastic or it's going to curl under. I knew that before I did it, but I thought if I kept my distance and kept it on low, it would be okay. Don't do that. Use a fan or just be patient. Now I'm going to take this in the same method. I'm just going back and forth with the brush strokes. And then once it is dry, this is how it's going to look. And to me, that looks more like a gourd. It has a little bit of a satin finish and I'm totally okay with that. See there? Don't worry about that. We're going to fix it. You know, I always fix my boo-boos because I want to show you how to fix it in case you have a boo-boo. So this is cork lights, but you can get whatever lights you have at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to add these little ribbons to it. These are going to be like a leaf bottom, I guess you could say, or a mossy look, a mossy bottom maybe. I'm going to just cut these in sections. I'm not going to cut them completely square. And I'm going to stack them two pieces of each color just like that and I'm going to make a little circle out of a cardboard scrap because this is going to be how we glue those pieces of ribbon down. You will burn the fire out of yourself if you put this, try to do this without using a base and I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to keep on happily crafting with no boo-boos. So you're just going to stack these on, protect your fingers and I'm just using my silicone tip finger to press it all down into the glue. Then you can just go around and trim it up if you want to. 
kind of make it into a circle because it's going to sit into the bottom and then the sides are going to kind of fold up the bottom. It's hard to show you this because it's inside, but you'll, I think you'll get the idea. Kind of fold it and then let it just pop back out in there. You see how it goes up the sides just a little? That's the look I was going for. So now you can just go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue. You want to use this on your cool setting. And then go ahead and put in your base. Now that's all in the bottom so we have something to work with. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. We're going to let that dry and then we need to address the dent in the opening here. Doesn't this look like a gourd to you? I think it looks just like a gourd. I'm going to take some of this trim. Now you can get these trims at Dollar Tree. They have like three on a um, in one package and you can get them where the florals and things are uh, in my store anyway they put them all over the place maybe on an end cap i'm just going to seal the bottom by adding a little bit of glue i'm just showing you that it's on low, t low temp i don't want to melt this any further than it already has been and i'm just going to start using this my braided piece mine came from the thrift store but you use whatever you can find and you're just going to follow your curve around the opening here easy enough I'm trying to get it as close as I can not necessarily overlapping it although that might have been a better idea um, so you do what you feel like you need to do here and then with my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside I'm just kind of squeezing that down to the we're gonna call it our gourd is at this point it's a gourd keep going around here adding the glue and squeezing it into place and then when you get back to the original spot whether you have a dent or not, go ahead and trim that off so that it meets. I'm using my bullnose pliers. I've had people asking me what tool that is. I was told these are bullnose pliers. I think I linked some in my Amazon store, so check my Amazon link and um, you might be able to find some there. If not, I'll be glad to help you try to find some. Okay, so this is about seven and a half inches, just a scrap that I had left on the paper. And I'm just gonna go with the fold here. It already looked like it had a dent there, so we're gonna make a bow just like that. Simple, simple. No tying because this is regular. I mean, you know, you know you're gonna be tying with the, the jute here, but no tying the ribbon on pawn itself. That's, I think, what I'm trying to get at because it's really thick and it would be hard to get a knot in a bow this size. So we're just gonna use our jute to do that, and it's practically the same color, so you know, it blends in nicely. I'm going to put a couple of knots in here so that it doesn't slip loose. And then we can just trim it off. Then you can pull the tails down and you can push those little loops right into position whichever way you want them. You can flip these up or you can flip them down and you can turn this over whichever way you want to do it. You can seal your edges. So I'm going to take my sheet here, my transfer sheet, and I'm going to choose which one of these um, beautiful embellishments I like. And I'm going to start off with these. I, think, I don't know what kind of leaves these are here. Are these grapevine leaves? I'm not entirely sure. And they have little berries, so I'm just going to cut them off while they're still on the backing because I, they will stick to your fingers. So and then you're going to mess your print up, so be sure that you don't touch on there unnecessarily on the colored parts keep your fingers on the clear part I'm gonna hold it in place with my finger and because this is a round weird shape here I'm just gonna cut some notches up to the colored parts of this transfer just gonna cut notches that way it can lay down smoothly while I press it into place now I'm gonna show you a couple of options this is my Mod Podge little squeegee I guess you could call it you can use something like this to press it down. You can use a popsicle stick to press it down. And in a little while, I'll be using something kind of unpredictable. But you never know what you have on hand, right? So I want to help you out so there's no excuse for not crafting. Okay. So once I get all those edges pressed down, I can carefully move my finger and the film. And there you go. And in the lighter colored leaf, there's a little crack, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. All right. So now I'm excited feeling pretty confident I'm gonna go on to my next one and I like this one with the little pumpkins in it 
and I'm going to put it on the side. So before you decide, go ahead and cut some little slits in it and don't place it down until you are sure where you're going to put it because sometimes it will still stick on its own. These are really nice rub-ons in my opinion. So this is a clothespin. You know, the type with a little round top and the little, oh, there is completely wood. But look, you can use it and it works great because it's got a small um, surface area on the end and it really works nice to press these down. And then when you get ready to press, if you gotta press hard, put your thumb on the inside and support that under surface. Then you can flip that clothes pin around, whatever you wanna call it, and you can use the round part also. So see there, no excuses. Y'all got a craft, no excuses. So pretty. I love this particular um, sheet of rub-ons. All of the rub-ons from last year, um, three of them. They're all gorgeous. They're really, really pretty. So you can just use whichever ones you like. So again, pressing it down. If you need to trim it or cut little pieces out of it so that it lays flat for you, go ahead and do that. And you can put your embellishments wherever you want on your gourd. I just like it kind of around the opening here. I think it's really pretty. Brings attention and, you know, everything to the front. And I like that. So now they are all stuck down there. Very pretty. We're going to work on some florals. A little floral piece here. I like the green on the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut some of those green leaves on and add them. Because there's some green in the other pieces of what we got going on in this gourd and I want to go ahead and let that stay there again I live in southern Alabama so we have green all year round all year round we do have some fall colors too but you know if we're gonna be realistic there are places in the world that still have green in the fall so do whatever feels right to you I'm gonna start making a little swag here I'm just gonna alternate really no particular color idea here um, I want it to match what's going on already with what we've already used but no real pattern I'm just kind of going back and forth the bigger leaves on the bottom the smaller ones on the top so that you can see a representation of each color and then on the back I'm just going to add one more green leaf like toward the bottom once that glue has dried you can take something to poke a hole right through it you can use a hole punch you can use whatever you have but I'm just using one of these little wood carving tools from Dollar Tree and then just make a hole and then I'm gonna feed my flower right through it now I bent the stem just like this so that it doesn't stand straight out so that it points forward and isn't that cute I like that so it fits right in the hole on the top and you can still see the gold if you want to look at the gold that's great if you don't don't worry about it it's gonna be covered on the back anyway so now we're gonna put our little bow right here in the front on the side where I made my boo-boo nice all right the best part we're gonna be working on the inside now there's so much going on in this project but you know take what you want leave what you don't I'm gonna unwind it and then I just wrapped it around my hand several times so that I had a bigger area here but you can have yours pulled completely apart if you want you're gonna take some type of mounting tape this did come from the Dollar Tree if you have one of these little cork ones like I have, they're perfect because they fit right in the neck above, you know, the neck of the gourd. We're going to call it our gourd. They fit right up in here and you can hide them and you can still turn your lights on and off. Perfect. You can order those from Dollar Tree. I mean, uh, goodness, from Amazon. But you may be able to find something similar enough at Dollar Tree. I don't know. You'll have to check and see. You could always use a flameless tea light in here if you wanted I'm going to add some of the same colored leaves that we used on the top up there and the bottom off to the side a bit. And this is going to be where we're going to nest down our mushroom. I hope you can get an idea. I hope I'm explaining it well enough because I know it's hard to see the darkness inside of that pumpkin. So then you want to place your mushroom toward the center back of the pumpkin I actually set mine down a little bit too close to the front but that's okay you know I can still see it nicely and it looks like a little starry night in there isn't it cute I'm gonna turn off the lights in just a second to show you my son is helping me 
and he's got the lights off for me so you can see how it looks I think it's really cute so now we're gonna seal in and make that all of those little appliques that we put on or these little pieces here that we put on we want to make them blend in and look a little bit richer and the Mod Podge that we use for the rest of this project is going to be perfect to do that it does bring out the richness of these little um, rub-on transfers and it's going to help seal them in place so they almost look like they were hand painted and I like that idea and we're gonna do that to each one it's gonna blend in and dry and look so nice and then if you want to cover up the back and you don't want that show when you just add a leaf right there now it's all covered up nice all right y'all so here are our beautiful projects I love this little house it's so pretty here are our thankful tags are grateful blessed and thankful tags and I am thankful for you I'm thankful for all of my subscribers and everybody who views my videos look how cute I also made those risers y'all need to go watch my risers video I'll have that linked for you if you're interested in making some of these of your own I hope you can get a good idea of what I've been doing in these videos. I hope you see something that you like here, that you're inspired, that you can learn so that you will subscribe and follow me through this journey. It's wonderful having you here. It's wonderful having all the positivity in the comment section. You know, you talk to me, but feel free to talk to one another as well. I love these projects and I believe in you and I know that you can do something just like this or very similar take your own spin make it your own thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon bye